gained 10 pounds eating the red and the green M&M, bro. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Stop it up today. How you brothers been for the week, man? Oh, we've been, been good, good, man. Been good. 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 Yeah. good. We can't, we can't ignore the ratings. I mean, this light skin thing is working for me. And I heard it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Jay, where do we start? Yo, 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 what's up, what's up, what's up? Welcome back to Let's Chop It Up. Please follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Like and subscribe, and tell a friend to tell a friend about four brothers on this YouTube channel. My brother, and also make comments, the good, the bad, and the ugly. We get back to all of them. So tonight, we're very excited. So I know we should get some comments on tonight's uh, guest tonight. We got the uh, uh, gubernatorial candidate, Tom Swazi, coming on later on. But first of all, I got to talk to my brother from another mother. Haven't seen you dudes in a while, man. Talk to me. How you? What's going on with you, Dirt? Yo, man, life is all right, man. I'm just hanging in there, you know. Um, enjoying time with family. As always, I'm definitely a family man. I'm trying to spend more time with the kids. Um, looking forward to uh some time again with my middle son last week he rocked uh the band rocked uh uh earth wind and fire and everything else and now this year this week in my dynamic middle son is on stage doing his theatrical debut so <laughs> you know what i mean so so i'm looking forward to that a lot of family time with that is in the tyler perry play <laughs> nah, <laughs> it is in a Medea play. It's not a Medea play. No, we got, we got. Listen, we got good white folks out here. We don't do Medea plays out here. All right? All right, it's a nice neighborhood. It's a nice neighborhood. All right, he'll he'll be in Belmore if you know anything about that. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. But um, but um, but no, everything's good, man. You know, just like again, just just enjoying this weather today was fantastic. I'm looking forward. I can almost <laughs> smell my grill. I'm almost ready. You know what I mean? And I'm looking forward to that. So um, and I'm here again with you fellas, man, with a very very uh exciting show tonight, and uh and I'm waiting to get into it, man. So that's where was that's where it's at. What's up, Roddy? What's going on with you, brother? How's everything? Everything's good. You know, I was doing my um fatherly family man thing today as well you know um my daughter I went to, i just came from my daughter's softball game she went four for four she was killing it oh, that's what's up, um, yeah. All right. All right. shout out shout out to sid the kid sid you know shout out shout out but um no she did very well today you know um caught, caught a couple of grounders too um tagged people out on third i was i was okay. i was impressed she get she's getting better she's getting a lot better but um, the highlight of my week was uh, me and my wife went away for the weekend. We went to Virginia. You know, we do these little things every now and then just for us. You know, we do things with the kids, too. But, we, you know, every now and then we got to do something for us. So we went to Virginia and we saw the Isley Brothers. Nice. Um, That's what's up. Yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Ron Isley still has it. Nice. Big. Isley, bad, bad man. Has yeah, yeah. Big. Very bad man. Um, like. You look at this man on stage and you realize that he's up there in the years. But the thing is, this man has an aura where you look at him and you say, damn, this motherfucker's cooler than a motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Like, he just don't stop being cool. You know what I mean? It's natural for him. But um, it was an amazing show. Um, Nice venue. You know, I, me and my wife hey, probably. Mm -hmm. Hey, Monique, how are you? Me and my wife probably were the youngest people in there. We didn't need no wheelchairs or no walkers to get in. But it was, you know, people up there. But it was an amazing, amazing Dana, show. What up? Yeah. You know, hey Dana. Um, but other than that, everything else is good. You know what I'm saying? Um, family's good. Thank God, I'm good, and I'm glad to be here with you guys, man. Good, to, good to see y'all. Yeah. What's up? What's up? Hey Don. 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 Hey, Don. <laughs> I gotta come by and get a smoothie. Word. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Simone, absolutely. what's up, sis? Simone, what's going on? Hey, Simone. Yo, Simone, I want you. Is Simone that, that's a Fed? Nah, man, nah. Simone's in Chicago, man. <laughs> Simone awesome. Peoples, man. She Which one is the Fed? Shauna. 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 Okay, Shauna. 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 Yeah, I got some people I need Shauna to run for me. <laughs> <laughs> D, those are new glasses, D. Yeah, these are my blue light glasses, man. My eyes, man. These. 
the weather got nice today, so stuff started getting in my eyes. My eyes got a little red, man. So I, just, I got you. I got you. Yeah, it's my blue light glass. I don't wear glasses yet, man. I'm good. Move over that thing <laughs> almost near your eye. That thing on the screen. Oh, man. Listen, yeah. because of my because of my low budget producer will not give me a new camera. My camera on my laptop is <laughs> it, it got a little some kind of crack in it. So that's why we got this. This, this oh this this way this way this um yeah permanent looking roach head these two roaches that they trying to they trying to sneak up on me here man those are roaches those are roaches uh, <laughs> they might you know be, that might be a chick's eyelashes <laughs> that's a possibility that's a possibility <laughs> my eyelashes but, get long man my eyelashes come around the corner before they do yeah <laughs> those are those are the um Bobby Walmack frames right. <laughs> Thank you, <Dina. laughs> Crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're coming down on top. Yeah, man. Don't worry. You'll what be fine. Say? What's Simone saying right there? She says, unfortunately, there's a lot of gun violence in Chicago since the nice weather got here. Sorry you know, it's warm, that. they come outside. Yeah, Sorry yeah, that, yeah. Man. Sorry yeah. That. Yeah. I always say the, the, the nicer and warmer the weather, the more <laughs> people are going to get hurt. Yeah. yeah. She says, Kelvin's still looking for the S. <laughs> Somebody stole my ad sign. That's what it was. You know who it was, too. It was the neighbors. Can't even keep the ad sign no more. I had an alarm on my ad sign. Gone. Dang. What's going on with you, Kelvin, man? You know what it is. Well, first of all, you'd be very proud to know another three or four payments, I would be able to get a gallon of gas. So I've been, I laid on the way a while ago, so I'm working. I'm working to soon it'll be mine. You know what I'm saying? Okay, I, I, I just want to say something. I, I don't want people to think I come in talking about the natives or negative things. But I want to say this about my neighborhood. What is this thing about everybody thinks that because I have a corner house, my house is long-term parking for when you got to go to the airport. Very cars at the house for, a week, uh, for an entire week. You know what I'm saying? Just have a little respect. You know what I'm saying? At least try to play it off. I mean, car been there for two weeks and the people come back with luggage and look at me like I'm wrong. That's what I understand about my people. You know, so as the weather gets warm, I got, I want to start a business where you can do like a curbside Airbnb for cars. Like I should be able to profit. You should be able, somebody had a good idea. You should be able to buy the parking spot in front of your house and lease it out. No, Kelvin, do like the white people do. Just put cones in front of your house and just say you own <laughs> oh, no, they do that. They do that out here. And they do that they out here. Oh, cone, yeah. Rodney. That's what I'm telling you. They're going to steal the cone too. You're going to lose the spot and the cone. I live in a I polite see. neighborhood. We don't have to do these things like that. Out yeah, here. Yeah, I don't see, know Derek, how we're letting people divide us, brother. Those of us who live in native town need to support. <laughs> nah, I know it was. I grew up in that yeah. community, brother. I miss those things. I miss yeah. those things. But now, other than that, everything is good. My man, D, I know you got a lot going on. Talk to us, brother. Well, first of all, you're right, Kelvin. It's cheaper to buy cocaine to buy gas. You can buy got that unleaded. I know you got it. I got that. I got that soup. I got that soup. Word up, diesel. Good God, I don't even want to drive a truck. Yeah, I got diesel. It's insane. But now I'm all right, man. I'm like you know, I'm going through my little uh fat transplant. Like I was always fat, but now I just realized I identify as trans slender. And so what I'm, gonna, so what I'm what I'm going to do on on Monday is I go through my whole transformation. I'm a, I'm a, yeah, I'm gonna go have the surgery so I can be totally slender. And I want my, I want to tell the guys I, my pronouns as slim, slender, and skinny. So for I now, feel like see me, congratulations, D. Be, okay, that's so right, brother. My brother yes, my pronoun, so you're going to permanently oh, identify as a slim man? Yes, I am slim. I am. I am skinny. I am. I am. What did Monique say? I am Jimmy Walker. <laughs> Kelvin said I was in. Uh, <laughs> she said Kelvin, I was in VA this weekend, and the natives was in Walmart with bonnets and silk PJs. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that's where the natives yeah. train at. You got to go to be certified. You got to do your internship gotcha. at Walmart if you're the native. <laughs> <laughs> Lane D said, Dina uh, at Dina. That's what I was thinking. We got the good parking hookup. What did oh, you no. say earlier than that? I got it, I got it better than Kelvin. Kelvin. I live literally five. I could walk to JFK. Yeah. They can walk to the air yeah. train from your house, dude. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I live that close yeah. to the airport, I, man. I, I got to ride from D services when I go on vacation. <laughs> Everybody. My cousin <laughs> from Jersey. My cousin you come to Jersey and, and drive over here to go to the airport because they can park <laughs> over here. That's the yep. insane thing. They coming from Patterson all the way over here just to, to park. D, I want to ask you a question. What's I want up, you to bro? tell the truth, go right? Ahead, go ahead. The times that I park my car at your house, uh 
uh-huh. and you drove me to the airport in my car and I leave it with you until I get back. Uh-huh. Yo, you be driving my shit? I do crimes in your car. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Yeah, I knew those, you were doing something in my car. Yeah, those, those are crimes. Those are crimes. Your, your shit all over the place, man. Well, <laughs> yo, the thing is, because the thing is, I usually leave it with a half a tank. He always come pick me up. It's like less than a quarter. <laughs> Hey, will you be going in my car? That's how you know, boy. I'm picking up side chicks in your car like your boy. I just, I just oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> this I'm dude is trying wild. to jam me up, man. I'm doing, I'm doing all kind of crimes in your car, man. Wow. You know, Rod Rod, I'm exploring foreigns. I'm expensive foreigns. I'm all, all in these streets. Heard up. <laughs> dude is crazy. Heard up. But for people to know, like, please, uh, you know, like, subscribe. You know, throw some thumbs up on tonight's episode. What's up? And we just want to tell out. people like next week we'll be taking off. Like I said, I'm going to get my trans slender transformation on Monday, so we're going to take off Wednesday. We'll be back the following Wednesday before after that, though. With a, hopefully with a, with a new guest. I'm trying to run working on now. So, um, yeah, man. So, guys, man, <clears throat> do you think we're in the best of times? Or the, or the, the best of times is behind us now, man. I, you know what? It's so funny, and I know it's kind of a, a morbid subject. But when I used to hear people talk about the good old days and stuff, you just thought it was older people that just was reflecting on their youth and things like that. But I thought about it. And when I look across the board, I don't think neighborhoods are better. I don't think families are closer. I don't think times are safer. I don't think money goes as far. Um, I don't think food is better. It just really looks like the best days are behind us. It just feel it feels like that because I think we we on this kind of downward spiral that I don't think we can stop this train. Like I think you'll you'll adapt to things, but I think now things are getting really kind of you know. There's I think trauma and negativity is so normalized now. We benefited from not growing up with this super technological age. We benefited where you you played with friends. I think kids don't play together anymore. I think it's just, I think the best times are probably behind us. I'll be honest with you. We just have to adjust to the new times. But I do. I think the good old days are, are far behind us. Yeah. Well, I, I agree with Kelvin. Um, the thing is, like he said, you know, I mean, when we were kids, we played out in the street. We went places. We did things. The kids are not as active as they used to be. Like, you know, if you got your kids, of course, in sports or whatever, and, you know, their their hobbies or whatever, that's all good. But it's nothing like, you know, considering I'm a father and I see how the kids react today, nothing like when I was a kid. And like like Kelvin said, now you know why my at symbol is Mr. Daily Routine, because people get caught up in daily routine constantly and they forget about the things that are really important you know what mm-hmm. i mean you got people working more jobs to make ends meet you know doing That's more right. hours so i mean even before inflation came but i think that and i hate to sound negative i think the the backlash of the pandemic we still haven't even scratched the surface of what's c- coming from that mm-hmm. like i do predict that you know we see now where you see everywhere you go is help wanted signs, all these jobs and stuff like that. I think at some point that's going to reverse and it's going to be hard for people to find a job because they're going to go tremendously automated. They're going to go robotics. They're going to do a lot of things where they're going to eliminate jobs for people. Mm. And it's going to be tough for a lot of people. So I do say the best days that I feel they're, they're behind us. I think, like you said, we're going to have to adjust, you know, but um, yeah. I'm, I think we're going to be able to look back and say, Back in our days, it was much better. I, yeah. I hate to say it, but I think you're right, Ronnie. Monique yeah. just checking in. She said, I had to show my kids double dutch, which is so sad. You know, True. that was a right to pass. <laughs> yeah, man. You they know, should have had that joint in the Olympics. We'd have cleaned up every year in our community. <laughs> you know, you know you what? Wanna, go ahead, go ahead, Ronnie. Now I want to tell a double dutch story. When I first I first came on the job as a police officer, and um I uh was working with this white guy one day. And um, we were driving around, you know, we were working in the hood and um, we were driving around and all of a sudden he just yelled in the car. He said, did you see that? Did you see that? And I said, what? I'm looking around thinking something happened. Somebody <laughs> pulled out a gun or something. And he goes, those girls over there were jumping with two ropes. And I said, you never saw that before? He goes, no. He turns the car around and he goes and pulls up and he watches them jump. Now, you know, when the police pull up. Everybody stopping. They like, yo. Yeah. I said, dude, you can't sit on them like this. They're gonna think that we watching them. I said, just go up the block. You'll be able to see them jump. He goes, I never seen that before. 
Wow. I said, yeah, because you're white. You never, you don't understand that. He goes, <laughs> he said, so how did they learn that? I said, first of all, it's called double dutch. And it just right there let me know how police, like people are being put in neighborhoods that they totally right. don't understand. Right. You know right. I mean? right. That was my first dose of it. Right. This, here's a man that right. basically comes from far Long Island, you know, comes right. to Queens, South Queens to work. And he's never seen double dutch in his life. Right, but right. You, you're expecting him to be able to relate to the community. He can't relate to the community. You know, until you said it, Rodney, I just realized I don't know the last time I've seen it though myself. No, nah, kids are not doing it no more. I'm gonna tell you, doing it no more. I'm about to pay someone to teach double dutch in my sense. That would be good. You that's should bring that back. But that's 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 how crazy it is. Like I like I no lie, I was I had to turn double dutch back in the day. I, mm -hmm. front. I was you know because I are had you double handed? Now, I'm not double handed, man. I'm not double. Okay. I'm not, you know, I can get it on. With you me. can rock in, okay? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know go other, I go go reverse on that shit. So what it was like, you know, all the guys would be like, my boys went to camp and stuff like that. And some of my parents, they never, I never went to camp, none of that stuff. So I hang out. If Monique was there, Monique, she, well, I think her name is different on her head, but Monique and I used to be on there, or my friends Nikki and them, and I hang with the girls. I know the cops got nice. No, I do the same thing. I, I hands, 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 son. I'm braiding hands, 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 hands. I do the same thing. I never did the joint for double touch, but I, you know. I, I took it back. Took it back on that one, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 I used to love watching them getting ready to go oh, in. Nice. When they once start getting ready to jump in, they start, you know, that rhythm outside the rope. <laughs> then they jump in and do a routine, spin around, I can't clap do that. hands and stuff while they jumping. It, it was massive, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Sandra, yeah. check it in. She says, uh, I think every generation will have the best uh, time and the worst of time. Very, yeah. The difference Very is good. how the violence has changed, especially as it relates to people of color. Yeah, I agree with you, Sandra. You know, I was, I was, Sandra, I, Sandra, 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 Sandra. I agree with you, Sandra. Yeah, yeah, she what said, up, Sandra? yeah. Thanks, thanks a lot. I love yeah, Sandra. No, I agree with you. I actually think that, um, when you start talking about the best of times and the worst of times and all things, I think it's all cyclical, number one, you know, and it also is according to who we're talking about, which group you're talking about, you know, which people you're talking about, you know, um, you know, you, and you have to adapt, you know, um. You know, we see some as 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 black folk, we have seen some pretty steep times. You know what I'm saying? Our best times behind this, yeah, but it's you know, it's cyclical, man. We've we so That's um true. you know what I mean? So you know we've, we've seen people in the sixties and fifties price was bad then and people think about in slavery was really bad. Exactly, yeah. you know? exactly. Yeah. And then we have reconstruction, you have all kinds yeah. of things, you know what I mean? That's so it's cyclical for us, you know what I mean? Our mm -hmm. our the you know, so so our experience is very, very unique in this country. And um, and that's one thing. And I and, and and who's to say? I think what happens is if if we've learned one thing about ourselves as a people is that we are very adaptable. You know what I mean? So um, we may we're down because the entire nation right now, I believe, is in a depressed time. I think, you know I think the I mean? world is in a depressed time. Well, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, Derek, you know, I think Derek makes a lot of points. The only thing is, I feel it's almost like global warming. It feels like there's a shift that just feels like it can't be reversed. In other words, there was a time when we was younger, there was a different level of respect for adults, period. I mean, I I, that. I, I, indisputable. Yeah. I'm talking about adults you didn't know. I'm talking about I still call my people I grew up with, their parents, Mr. and Mrs. and all these things like that. We, the, the, the concept of going online to, to get a 3D printer to print out a gun to shoot up a school or this, that, and the third, that stuff is normalized. That's unheard of. That's unheard of. Man. That's no, normalized no now. Like, you know what I'm saying? That. Like, in other words, the idea is you can shoot somebody like it's nothing like and, right. uh, and go to school the next day. That's the thing. We didn't grow up where it was like, I mean, there used to be beef, but usually with provocation. No, why didn't yeah. you have to do it? Because I want to see if the gun worked. I mean, it's just the different <laughs> Like, it's just, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. But, uh, yeah, my cousin in Far Rockaway had <laughs> double dutch trophies. D, Yo, listen, so let's, my let's, cousin. Do it, D. We need to get some sponsorship Monique. for that, D. No, send me a contact, man. I got I got, I got, got three I three, three community centers throughout whoa, the Whoa, 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 whoa. What? Is her cousin? Did her cousin used to be school safety? Uh, Monique, is your cousin used to be school safety? Right, you want to know? Yeah, check in with us. Whatever it happened, Mo, it was a long, long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dawn says, My my daughter just said it's scary outside. Too many innocent bystanders. Wow, being hurt. and that, that yeah, says bro. it right there. Yeah, it was, Yo, what up, what up, Wayne. Wayne. what's up, Wayne? So, the thing, <laughs> like, it's, it's, what it is with the streets is no code. 
Like, you know, like, and it, it was bad. Right. Like, they got the, the bad times too. Like, we got to realize, guys, we grew up in the 80s. It was yeah. horrible. Yeah, yeah, man. It was, it was horrible. It was a lot of death. <laughs> we lost a lot of brothers and sisters in the 80s. That crack era was horrible. Yeah, you man. See, you see how small of a world is? I knew her cousin. I used to work with her. Long time ago. Wow. Yeah, long time ago. <laughs> long time ago. <laughs> Whatever happened on the job stays on the job. <laughs> <laughs> nah, she um she was part of a double dutch um team. Actually, really? I knew a principal that had um um friends of hers that they performed double dutch at um events and stuff like block parties and stuff like that. Um, I think I'm I think I think I can get you the information to her D if you want to get to me. I interviewed one lady. I've been, I've been heard back. I'm like, but Monique's cousin is nice too. I seen I seen her jump. Anything really, if people in the listen on anything dealing with kids right now is the best time to get at me. You see my at on um, I mean, how to get to me on Instagram. Get at me. I'm looking to do keyboard, and I got like 25 keyboards. I'm about to do a whole bunch of stuff with kids, <laughs> anyhow. But, um, like, wing, like, go back to Wings comment. This is so true. Go back to Wings comment. We get a chance. What, yeah, yeah Wings said it says, When I was younger, taking a knife to school was considered one of the most unruly things in my day. Yeah, absolutely, man. You know, um, and, and you, you, I don't know with the metal detectors now. I don't think you could even get that far with it, but I don't know, you know. But um, but yeah, somebody bring a knife to school. That was crazy, man. Oh, yeah. it was back in the day. Yeah, Sandra, absolutely. We are resilient and adaptable for sure. Uh, but can we get a break? You know what? That's a, That's a good question. And we God, we are our own break, though. <laughs> I hate to say it, Sandra. We are our own cavalry. We always have. Sandra. Yeah, we are our own cavalry, man. You know, we've always been that. It's always been that way. You yeah. know, so we have to create it. You know, we can't look for anybody. Yeah, but, but yeah, definitely. But we're gonna go on. We're not gonna stop living, Derek. But no, absolutely. Is, like, really, I'm I'm just saying. Like, I look at times when when kids could be kids. They they got access to too many adult things too early, and it comes at them too fast. The things that you learned at 18, these kids know at eight, and it's just bad. It's just too much to me, you know? I know. Yeah, they, yeah, right. they take too much of the um, – I think they take a lot of the um, a lot of the power away from parenting, man. You know what I mean with regard to that? You know, I think, you know, just I would love to see oh, a lot more of – They're shaking um, the head. I see it's shaking the head. Not in my no. house. Well, you know what? <laughs> Well, here's the thing. Nobody, now, I don't let nobody from the outside tell me what to well, do. Well, here. here's the thing, Rodney. Check it out, though. I get what you're saying, but check it out, though. Yeah. All right. When you stop and think about it, you send your kids off to school. They go to mm -hmm. sleep. All right. They wake up rested, fed probably, or if not fed from by you then at school. All right. And they sit down ready to learn. And they get their and whoever's teaching the teacher, the school system get their best six to eight hours of every day. All right. Do you spend? Your best six to eight hours with your children. Maybe, maybe now you do because you're retired. Yeah. Coming up, though, you know what I'm saying? Like, did how many times did that? How, how many times did you give your kid four hours of your undivided attention? You know what I mean? Every day. You know what well, I mean? When would that? When did that ever happen to you? Uh, but, no, I spent. No, I spent a lot of time with my kids, even when no, I was I, working. And, like and, the weekend was theirs. Go ahead. Right. So, so we're talking about the weekend. All right, uh -huh. and hopefully Sophia. you get that time in on the weekend. Yes, Sophia. Hey, the issue is the breakdown of the family. Well, you know that's one issue. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. We can go into that too. But I'm, See, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning. My, my, my point is, and I feel like, just my opinion. The you them that you you're mandated to send your child to school. All right, and you're not in control of all the things that they learn while they get there. All right, and. A lot of the things, and 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 not to mention this, not just mention what they learn, but also, you know, there are other people looking into your situation. You know what I mean? The children have to look a certain way. They have to talk a certain way. They have to be healthy. You know what I mean? People are. I think there's a lot, uh, a, a lot more, uh, uh, I guess you say, interference from from the outside into your family. You know, so um, no, I, yeah, I, I get that. You basically you saying you don't want the kid that live up the block influencing your kids with their negative stuff and basically things that they learn negatively in school. That's what you're trying to say. Yeah. Among but the thing is, as far things. as discipline in my house, like I never fell into that thing about mm -hmm. like feeling like a parent where my discipline was taken away from me. I never felt that way right? because I know that first of all, that's a trap. You know, mm -hmm. I say, if you take me as the father out of this household, guess what? Everybody's going to grow up different in here. You know, the thing is, like, I'm I'm a strong believer that, you know, 
Fathers should be in the kids' lives, mothers too, the whole thing. Do the best you can with what you have. If you're a single mother, single father, do the best with what you can. The thing is, too, you have to realize, too, when you have kids, that you have to put them before everything that that with you. You don't come first no more. They come yeah. first. Yeah, but no, I, I when when my kids used to have to be, you know, I had to put down the goon hand, I put the goon hand down. I mean, because the bottom line is I didn't want nobody else out there putting no goon hand on them. And I didn't want to have to come to a police station and get none of my kids. So yeah. I basically kept things tight in, in my house, you know. So but see, I, I think it's like, Sophia's point is right there. You talking about the family. Mm -hmm. Everybody, all you on the screen, kids grew up with, with their fathers. What I'm mm -hmm. saying is that's a rarity now. Yeah, so That's it's, not it's like, like a normal and, thing. And, and, now. When and, I was a kid, there was one of my friends who didn't have a father at home. Now... Today is probably one of them that do have their father. Their father yeah, That's it's a obvious, major yeah. difference. I had a girl ask me one time. She was like, "What was it like growing up with your father?" You thought she asked how the pyramids were built. Yeah, <laughs> she couldn't fathom growing up in the house with the man that was the one that that was conceived with the mother. Like, to believe it. I'm saying also, man, the school system almost have a surrogate parent role, too. You know what I mean? In a lot of ways, you know, especially when you start talking about, you know, in single parent ho homes and all of that, you know, you're mm -hmm. single parent, man. You're working a lot, man. You know what I mean? But you still have to yeah. find time with your child and everything. You really people are really leaning. They're, real real talk. They're leaning on the kids. They're leaning on schools just to feed their kids a lot of times. You know what yeah. I mean? And they're watching so, while they're at work. And watching while they work. So they're not in control of anything that's being taught or anything they're learning at that point. And they have very little time when they finally do see them and very little energy to kind of go over and the days, you know, the events of the day. So, you know, it's a lot of things with, with regards to that as well, I think, you know. Yeah, so. if, if, we, if we, like it's something called community schools. If it, and I, I, I ran a community school for a while. And if they really went to the traditional way of how community schools was built, we really could have the parents involved in the school more. If that really happened, I did community schools for quite a few years. If it really was the way it's supposed to be, when well, you have the the school involved, you have the, the 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 pillars of the community involved, and everybody would wrap around these young people and their families, and we could probably get out of this. But we got to get more involved. Like you know, Ronnie said, you got to make more time. That's what parents. I know it's hard for parents to get time, but the way the economy is now, they probably got to work two jobs, and the TVs right. watch them, and the phones are watching the kids now, right. the computers are watching them. I understand that. So it's like we got to figure out how we can get back together and get this village together. That's what it really got to come back village, village raising kids. But and I know Sam going to get to them comments too. But before yeah, Derek, no, we got to yeah, see yeah, Go ahead, yeah, go ahead, Derek. Yeah. Sam, go to the comments. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just now. I'm just saying. I just want to shout out to my mother. My mother in law, especially, I just had the same kind of conversation with her, mm -hmm. and she really mm -hmm. is a high. Really, when it comes to education, she thinks education. She feels like the children really need to be educated a lot better, and that will stop a lot of the. The issues you know what i mean so um there's more to it but yeah family is the key sandra absolutely yeah you know um hey shana what's happening you know what's happening what's going on well, hey y'all and uh well yeah wing said i call my little brother the goon hand my little hand the goon hand. Hand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. all right uh brad uh chicken wing shot me in the butt <laughs> from his upstairs window with a pellet gun when i was walking to school knife my ass <laughs> <laughs> Knife my head. I remember that too. <laughs> <laughs> we grew up crazy. We grew up crazy. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Unique said, I just told D that a pastor's niece asked her, What color plate <laughs> do you give a transgender? She said, What is that? Didn't know wow. a transgender. Didn't know what a transgender was. Wow. Dina said, Kids spend too much time on their phones and social media, way too influenced. That's the other thing, Dina. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Sophia, most families during the week, parents only see their kids one or two hours in the morning and three at night. The rest of the hours, they're influenced by other things. And that's part of my point, Sophia, exactly. Uh, Monique, my husband and I had a rule to make sure the kids, uh, our, our our kids played with, we knew their parents. The other thing that's very important, yeah, you know, that's definitely, know who they're definitely spending time true. with, know who your kids are spending time with. Dennis yeah. says, uh, my dad is a police officer, tro drove me crazy growing up. Strict wasn't the word, but I appreciate him today being so hard on me and my brother. Now I'm my best self for my baby girls. Thanks, Officer Dad. That's right. Yeah. Oh, got another one. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Sophia checking in. Uh, no more big mamas. Yeah. Yeah. Mommy is 15, grandma's 30, great grandma's 45. <laughs> great great grandma's. <laughs> we got to bring yeah. back big mama with those big yeah. arms and those swollen yeah. ankles. Oh, man, big swollen ankles, yeah. baby. Yeah. <laughs> Swollen <laughs> ankles and can fry some chicken. <laughs> fry some chicken and whip some Yo. ass. <laughs> yeah. He said they're all wearing the same color, same hair and nails, and going after the same man. Oh man! Wow! 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 wow. wow. 
Oh, oh yeah. yeah. took it there. Stop okay. I say. Yeah, the Haitian strict one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They make them kneel. They, 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 they make their kids kneel on rice. <laughs> <laughs> uncooked. Uncooked rice. I mean, it's uncooked. Oh, you know, yeah, crazy. But, you know, <laughs> okay. So, listen, tonight, man, like I said, we was very excited about tonight. What's going to happen tonight? We got we got, we got, got our, our brothers coming in tonight, man. He's running for the governor of New York State. And I like the way he came in from the beginning, Tom. Swazi came in, kicking the door, waving the 4-4, saying, I'm not down with the BS. So without further ado, my man, Jamie, can you bring it out, brother, Tom Swazi? Wow. Hey, boom, guys. Thanks for coming through. Thanks for coming hey, boom, guys. What's going on, man? What's going on, Tom? How you feeling, Welcome. Man? Thanks for having me on. Thanks for coming, man. We Tom, really thanks for coming on the show. We yeah, appreciate man. it. I'm excited Absolutely. to be hanging out with you guys. Yeah, that's what's yeah. up, Tom. That's what's up. Hey, we don't write too many people. This is like a barbershop, Tom. So you know what I'm saying? So you coming into the barbershop. We're gonna do some barbershop. I guarantee today. I go to a different barbershop than you do. <laughs> hey Tom, <listen. laughs> hey Tom, I haven't really been to the barbershop. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a long time since the barbershop was told me, right? Yeah. So, you so, go to the Tom, you in, Tom, you in the library or you home? Yeah. I'm at home. I'm at home. Oh, okay. uh, these are not but these are candy boxes. These are <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, Tom. Tom, you got jokes already. I like that. That's what's good. That's what's up, man. So Tom, man, these are the brothers. Let's chop it up. And we got an audience here. Who are you? Like, I know you came in the door because I was sitting one day watching TV and I saw somebody say, I'm not the, with the BS up turn. I said, Who the fuck is that? And I said, Oh shit, <laughs> this is the guy running for governor. So I said, Let me check him out. So who are you, Tom? I'm uh I'm a guy who grew up, my father was an Italian immigrant. My mother was uh, Irish and English. She was a nurse. Best people I ever knew, my parents. And uh, <clears throat> I got involved in politics early. I was the youngest mayor in the history of my hometown at 31 years old, Glen Cove, Long Island. Mm. You ever heard of Glen Cove before? You ever hear yeah, oh, yeah. 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 We, 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 we New yesterday. Yorkers, man. We New Yorkers. We, two brothers live in Long Island right there. So oh, yeah. You ever hear of Ashanti? Of course, yeah, Tom, yeah. Tom, Tom. Tom, you know, Tom, 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 Cove. I went to Tom, 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 you know, you, Tom, you know we black, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, make sure you know we black. <laughs> this, this is not a tan, Tom. I ain't been yeah. to the beach yet, man. Go ahead, go ahead. Not everybody oh, knows who Ashanti is. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. So I grew up in Glen Cove, and I became the mayor of my hometown and uh, for eight years. Then I was the county executive of Nassau County for eight years. Uh, I ran for governor against Elliot Spitzer. I got my butt kicked. Uh, didn't turn out too well for Elliot Spitzer either, as we nah, know. Nah, nah, yeah, 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 yeah. He a little, he a, you know, he used to hang out with me back in the day, long time ago. Uh -oh. <laughs> now we know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> then I, I, I lost my race for re-election to county executive after eight years to a guy named Ed Mangano. Uh, Ed oh. Mangano just got uh, sentenced for 12 years in prison yeah. for corruption and bribery. Mm. Him and his wife, right? With the jail, right? You beat me. Your life is over after that, so you can't. <laughs> <laughs> so then I was back in the private sector, and I worked at an investment banking firm, and then I've been in Congress for the past five and a half years. I'm on the Ways and Means Committee, and I'm giving it up I'm, I'm to run for governor because I'm so fed up. I'm so fed up with the politics of everybody just fighting with each other all the time instead of getting stuff done. I'm upset about New York State. Everybody's leaving New York State. We lost more people in New York State last year than any other state in the United States of America. 314,000 people net out migration from New York State last year because people can't afford it, because the taxes are too high, utility rates are going up, rent's too high, uh, because of the crime that's growing in New York City especially, uh, and because of these kids that are left behind in our troubled schools. Uh, so... And I'm fed up with my own party, the Democratic Party. I'm a lifelong Democrat. You look at all my ratings. I'm a good Democrat. I get all the good ratings. But the bottom line is my party is not talking about the things people care about. And right now, people care about crime and taxes and affordability. That's what they're upset about. And they say, Tom, what are you talking about crime and, and taxes and affordability? Well, that's what Those are Republican issues. I said, no, it's not. That's what everybody cares about. And we got to start talking about it, not talk about it the way they talk about it on Fox News, but talking about it in a real way about how we can make people feel safe in their communities, how people can live a decent life and not be afraid and how people can afford to live here. So that's why I'm running. That's what's up. So, so Tom, I'm gonna, like in the last few years, we saw that black women came to the forefront for the Democratic Party, right? Helped get a lot of people elected with the black, with the black vote. 
what now we're four black men here and like what would make black men that like you know so we won't look at you as more the same what would make us when what would, what why would we to go and vote for you what would make us come what would what, what can you do for us you know i've got a real uh good relationship with a lot of black men i appointed a black man as the nassau county police uh, police commissioner mm. and he was from the new york city police department that was in 2002 you can imagine how popular that was in Nassau County in 2002 to hire a black police commissioner from the New York City Police Department. But because he was the police commissioner uh, and he was from New York City, we brought in a lot of ideas from New York City and he pl promoted a lot more black and brown officers in the department. As a matter of fact, the new, new New York City Police Commissioner is a black woman who came up through the ranks in Nassau County and she was promoted by Commissioner Jim Lawrence that I appointed as the police commissioner. Uh, I appointed uh, two African-American men as the deputy county executives for economic development. Uh, so that, because I wanted to make sure my government looked like the people I represent. And I wanted to put black men in positions of power so that they could have an influence on making big policy decisions. I appointed a black man as uh, the deputy county executive for parks and public works because they had the most contracts to give out. Because you can make a lot of speeches about uh, minority and women-owned businesses, and you can pass a lot of laws, but unless the people in power who make the decisions are on board with what you want to do, it's not going to happen. They'll always think of an excuse saying, oh, I couldn't find anybody qualified. Nobody applied. You know, I, nobody, nobody was qualified. Nobody had the, the certification. So you got to put black and brown people in positions of authority so they're at the table so they're part of the decision making process and these were non-traditional positions for black men you know the police commissioner deputy county executive for, for economic development deputy county executive for parks and public works so every politician says i'm going to do this i'm going to do that i've done it throughout my career i have, i was one of the early endorsers of eric adams for mayor of the city of new york early on he asked me to be one of his deputy mayors. I said, I'm not going to be a deputy mayor. I'm running for governor. I can do more to help you as governor <laughs> than I can as deputy mayor. So, um, listen, black men, uh, I've had it pretty tough in the United States of America generally uh, because of rates, high rates of incarceration. And you don't see a lot of black men in positions of power in enough of everyday life. And I like to uh, go out of my way to try and identify people that are qualified who can be role models for other people and make a difference. When I was, when I was Glen Cove mayor, the young mayor of Glen Cove, I appointed the first black city councilman in the history of Glen Cove. A guy named Albert Granger. His, his uncle was the head of the NAACP. He's a third generation dentist. A very talented, qualified guy. And he lost his first election campaign. And I said, well, you know, because I was moving another guy to another. I said, oh, I can appoint you again. He said, no, I won't take an appointment. I want to win it. Mm. We went on to run the next time. He was the highest vote getter of any city council member in the city of Glen Cove. Wow. Uh, I just talked to him today, yesterday, actually. Asked him for money for my campaign. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, let me ask you this uh, this question. Um, and I'm a native Long Island. I, I grew up in Massapequa, um, so I'm familiar with Glen Cove. I've always thought there seemed to be a divide um, between upstate New York, the five boroughs in Long Island. Is there a way to kind of rebuild a sense of community just in the state and the city together. You, you know, years ago, used to be always this issue between the governor of of uh, New York and the mayor. And I know you two are on the same uh, page, but how do we kind of unify to get a sense of community, rebuild communities again at large? Well, first, we got to understand what's going on in the state. You know, we pass a lot of laws in the state that come out of New York City. And we pass a lot of rules and a lot of things to do things for everybody and New York City can take it because New York City is the economic engine of the world. They can take the taxes and the regulation and that kind of stuff. And the downstate suburbs, Long Island, Westchester, Rockland and Putnam, they're feeding off the mothership of New York City so they can take it too. 
but you cut off north of Putnam and Rockland County and the rest of upstate New York would be one of the poorest states in the United States of America. They are suffering. I mean, like really suffering, like, like ways we don't know. And if you don't have a college or a hospital or a jail or a tourism destination, you cannot survive upstate New York. There's wide swaths of just economic misery because there's just no economic opportunity because the taxes are too high. There's too much regulation and we can take it downstate. It makes it hard down here, but up there they can't possibly survive. So we are losing people from New York state. It was mainly upstate for a long time, but now it's downstate too. When I, I'm, I'm, I'm older than you guys. I think I'm 60 years. I'm going to be 60 years old in August. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you're, you're a few years older. You know, uh, our producer is almost old as you. But so, whoa, wow, wow. <laughs> so when I was born, there were 45 members of Congress from New York State, because it's based upon your relative population to the rest of the country. 1962, 45 members of Congress from New York State. Today, there are only 27 members of Congress from New York State, and it's going down to 26 next year because of the census. We're losing relative population because everybody who's watching your podcast who's from New York knows somebody that moved to Florida, moved to North Carolina, moved That's to South true. Carolina, moved That's to Georgia, true. moved to Texas, moved to Arizona, because they're getting out of here because they can't afford it or they're concerned about the quality of life, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So we got to turn it around. Definitely. Yeah. Tom, let me ask you a question. How do you, you know, I, I heard you in the beginning, you talked about how, you know, your feelings towards the Democratic Party and all the things that, you know, you figured you would do different. Um, how do you convince a black person that has voted Democratic in the past numerous times and feel that their vote is just being taken, but they're not getting anything in return for their vote? Now, I did hear you say about appointing certain people in, in high positions and stuff like that. But how are you going to help the regular guy? What are you going to do to improve his his um, cost of living, his his life, his neighborhood, his community? Well, it's not just black people, but it's everybody. Mm -hmm. Everybody's worried about crime right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I, I, uh, I talk to families all the time that are are wrecked by by violence. Uh, people that are losing their businesses. People that are afraid to have their kids take the subway. Um, so everybody wants to be safe, and you know, quite frankly, black and brown people are the the biggest victims. Now, there's been injustices for black and brown people too getting arrested. That's why I thought Eric Adams was the perfect messenger because he always fought for racial justice in the police department, but he also was pro law enforcement and said, we got to protect people. So um, I think that that's an issue that's going to be important to, to black people, to all people is, is we got to get this crime under control and we got to do it in a fair way. We have to be more just in how we do it, but we got to make, we have, I have a 15 point crime intervention and prevention plan. On the prevention side, something I'd like to talk about is that we have to help our kids in troubled schools. Because who's the guy from Massapequa? Was that? Uh, Calvin. Calvin. Yeah. Hmm. So on Long Island, we got some of the best schools in the United States of America, okay? We got great schools, some of the best anywhere. But we also got Roosevelt and Hempstead and Wyandanch and Brentwood, which are some of the most troubled schools in New York State. Right. And these kids have been left behind for generations. And 75% of the people in jail have a drug, alcohol, or mental health problem. 50% of the people at Rikers Island have a learning disability. When we fail kids in school, they do not have a shot to make it later on in life. And I think that most of the dysfunction of our society comes from letting kids down in school. So if you take a good school district, Let's say 10% of the kids have a problem, you know, problem at home, mental health issues, you know, whatever, whatever the issue is. And you probably got a family that's supporting them and they got, you know, private health insurance. And you got a school psychologist and a school social worker and a school guidance counselor. And you can, you know, help those kids and their teachers and they can figure out the problems with those 10% of the kids. You go to the, a, a troubled school district and 70% of the kids are facing some sort of challenge. The volume of problems is just much higher. And they don't necessarily have the family support in all every instance. 
and they don't necessarily have private health insurance. And the, you cannot, with the one school psychologist, the one social worker, and the one guidance counselor, address all those problems. Mm -hmm. So my big idea is to take all of our health and human service agencies and all of our not-for-profits, health, mental health, veterans, seniors, youth, physically challenged, drug and alcohol programs, and bring them into our schools to help kids at a young age. So that when a teacher says, hey, this kid's having a problem and I just can't deal with it myself. I got too much other stuff going on. You got to bring like a social worker in to help that kid navigate the bureaucracy to find out where they can get services at a young age. Because everybody has heard a speech by a politician saying it's better to educate a child instead of paying for a jail cell. Well, how come it doesn't happen? Because we don't run things right. We have to focus right. on prevention and take all these health. And we spend billions of dollars on health and human service agencies. We spend more per student than any state in the United States of America on our schools. But these kids don't have a shot unless we get them help at a young age to deal with their problems. And I, kids have to go to school so they're a captive audience. You can find out what's going on in their family as well and help them to find out their problems. To not Because we have the programs, we have the services, but they're all designed for somebody to show up at the window when they're at their wit's end and their life's about to fall off the edge and they're desperate and they're coming in for a check or a housing choice voucher or food stamps or heating assistance, but it's probably too late. Mm -hmm. So you got to try and help them, these kids at a young age to avoid the little problems from becoming big problems later on. That's, that's one of the things I'm most Definitely. passionate about. It's not like the big campaign issue because it doesn't poll well, but it's the thing that I'm like the most passionate about trying to address. Hey, hey Tom, um, let me tell you, I'm the other Long Islander in, in, in the group. Uh, I'm South Shore Freeport. All right. So when you mention Roosevelt and Hempstead, you know. Freeport's not far behind and neither is Glen Cove where I am. Yeah. So, we're you like, know. We're always like number four or five, six from the bottom. Yeah. So, you know, and, and, and you can still get in there. You can, I will, and I want to say that you can still get a good education in Freeport if you try, yep. right? In Glen Cove. Yeah. So, um, but, um, but you mentioned that you mentioned the state of education, you mentioned uh, people leaving New York in droves, uh, uh, the economy, all of these things. And, and taxes, you got to worry about property taxes, property taxes. Oh my God. Let's start, you know what I mean? Right there. And um, and, I, and you talk about people leaving, and we're talking about people my age and, and our age group, and I'm two seconds, you know, from it myself at times, you know. Um, what am what 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 am I? What's going to keep me in New York? You know, tell me something good about New York. What if you had to sum up uh, what you're going to do? Because obviously you're going to come in, and when you become governor, you're going to change some things. You're going to do what you need to do to keep me here in New York. If you had to sum it up, what would you say you're going to do? What's what 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 do I have to look forward to in New York? First of all, New York is awesome, and our families are here, and we love the place. It's a fantastic place. All over the state, it's a fantastic place. But we're worried about the crime. Maybe not in Freeport as much but as they are in New York City. But in New York City, we're really worried about the crime. Uh, you know, People are afraid to take the subway. Certain neighborhoods are, are, are going back to the bad old days. I, when I was younger, I worked in Bedford-Stuyvesant at the Bedford-Stuyvesant Restoration Housing Project in 1986. I used to take the subway down there. That was a, a scary place. I've been to Ben Stuyvesant recently. They, they're starting to have crime problems like that. Again, I went to a, a vigil the other night for a kid that got shot. But so crime is the big one. Number two is we got to reduce the taxes. We, we, we got to, if we don't reduce the taxes, people are leaving in droves. We lost what's called the state and local tax deduction, SALT. Used to be you could deduct unlimited amounts of your, whatever you pay in your property taxes, and your state income taxes, you could deduct from your federal income so you don't pay taxes on the taxes you already paid. Trump got rid of that in 2017 because he knew it would only hurt high tax states like New York, and New York was never going to vote for him anyway. So he screwed us. <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work to reduce the taxes uh, so that people can afford to live here. Uh, and I'm going to try and help these schools. Uh, so the big three things are crime, taxes, and schools. And I'm going to go after the corruption. I mean, it's just it's just terribly, terribly, terribly corrupt in New York State. It's the most corrupt state in the United States of America, according to the Washington Post wow. last August. Wow. So three governors, past three governors left in scandal. Alan Hevesy, uh, uh, Schneiderman. Then we lost Skello, Silver, and Bruno, and a dozen other people. Brian Benjamin just got arrested, the lieutenant governor. Mm -hmm. It's because people don't feel like they're accountable. 
And what I'm running on is that number one, I got a heart for the people. I want to help people. That's why I'm doing this. I want to help people. I'll work with anybody. I'll work with Democrats. I'll work with Republicans. I'll work with progressives. I'll work with moderates. I'll, I'm a Democrat. I won't change my values, but I'll try and find common ground if you want to actually help people. And I, so I got the heart for the people, but I also have the skill set. I know how to do this stuff. I know, how to, I know how to run government. I'm trained as a lawyer and a CPA. I was the mayor. I was the county executive. I was in Congress. I know how to do this stuff. So I want to get stuff done. Well, Tom, before we go to the comments, I got uh, one more question for you. And also, see, why Elliot's not there, I told you. Elliot and I used to hang out back in the day. We said, me, him, Benjamin, we used to all get up, get to the club together. So I know those guys. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> but no, real quick, but you saying, like, up, really, uh, the rural areas are upstate are really bad. With now with the technology changing now, that we going green. Now, do you think, like, when you talk about investing in schools, schools now teach kids to go to college and try to get them college ready. I think we need to change that to go to vocational training, vocational Absolutely ready, right. and, it'll, and it'll create more jobs with going to growing green jobs, with the skill set, skill jobs. So with that, we saw in the pandemic, Rodney and I and, and Kelvin was getting our houses done during the pandemic. It, to get skilled labor is very hard. So, yep. well, where would the investment be back in the schools for vocational training? And also, if you go green upstate, will that transfer to the urban areas of New York City to teach their kids in the New York City area where the crime is up and we give them better options? What is, do you have a plan for the going green and the technology? What's going on now? Well, let me just say, let me just back up a little bit about the whole getting skills, okay? 60% of Americans and 66% of New Yorkers do not graduate from college. We have treated people who don't go to college like they're second class citizens for I don't know how long. Now, we should encourage people to go to college. I encourage my kids to go to college, go to college, go to college. But most people, 60%, do not go to college, they don't graduate from college. And you can get a good job and you can make a decent living and enjoy your life by being a plumber or a carpenter or an electrician or getting a, a skill. And we used to have BOCES was a big deal. We used to have wood shop and metal shop and automotive. I was just with a car dealer today. They can't find enough people to work on the cars in the service bureau. You can make $100,000 a year as a car mechanic easily, more than that. You could make you could make one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year as a welder. So we got to stop looking down at people and stop discouraging people from doing trades and doing jobs. You know, you could become a computer programmer, quite frankly, without going to college. So we got to train people for the jobs that America needs. We see these stories in the newspaper all the time: millions of jobs unfilled. And what do they want to do? They want to try and import people from other countries to come in and do them. Car dealer said to me today, he said, oh, you think we could get people from Ukraine to come over and work as our car mechanics because we can't find people to be car mechanics? I said, well, it's, it's a nice idea, but we really should be training our own people. Why don't you hook up with the Glen Cove High School? I'll try and put you together with them. Why don't you start getting kids interested in becoming car mechanics and getting a $100,000 job and start training them now? Right. Mm -hmm. Develop a pipeline. Go, yeah. go to the... Go to Westbury School District where you got a, a BMW dealership and go to those kids and teach them how to become car mechanics now. They'll have a great life. You know, America used to be based upon the idea, I'll work hard. In return for working hard, I'll make enough money so I can have a place to live. I can educate my kids. I can have health insurance and I can retire when I'm old without being scared. So many people work hard that can't possibly make it. The minimum wage is fifteen dollars an hour. I may have an idea for you, Tom. Yeah, I got. Well, these companies to come back here, right? They give them a little bit of tax breaks to come back to the state, but they have to invest in our schools. They have to have internship programs for these young people. If they have to go to, if they go to get another certification or uh, uh, degree for the work for them, they help them get scholarships to pay for them. But they have to come back if they want to do business in New York State because we still got billion, a uh, million some people, seven million, eight million people still here. So whatever it is, 10 million. 18 million. 18, 18, 18, 18, 18 million. million. I'm sorry, I'm thinking about New York wow. City. I'm sorry, I'm thinking about New York State. Yeah, 8 million New York State. Yeah, so they, they might have to use it. Tom, I might have to come in your campaign, man. I might have to be on your team. But anyway. You're hired. A dollar a year. <laughs> a dollar, dollar a year. A dollar a year. Damn, Tom. <laughs> you come in here to go back to my old days into these streets. I'm just trying to keep me off the street, Tom. I'm trying to keep me off the street. But I'm there. But, no, but uh, that's you know, we need to do, you know, the, the building trades. Carpenters, electricians, you know, plumbers, welders, iron workers, all that stuff, which have started to do a better job of including more black and brown people. They got to do a much better job. Electricians are very good at it now. 
Um, they have the idea of the apprenticeship programs. We have to, when you said the idea of an internship, it's got to be an apprenticeship program. You get paid, you earn while you learn to incentivize kids to do these jobs. You'll make some money while you're learning how to become expert in a skill. So uh, that's the way to do it. You got to, because the more you learn, the more you earn. But then if you give a way to earn while you're learning, it makes it even more attractive. So you, you, I, I adopt your idea fully. Yeah. Tom, how do you uh, think the current governor is doing? Terrible. She's failing. Uh, okay. I'm running against her. I, I, mean, I know she, that. I mean, you obviously don't think she's doing a great job because you're running against her. 91% of New Yorkers, 91% think that crime is a serious or very serious problem. 69% of New Yorkers say she's failing on crime. Why is she giving the mayor the stiff arm? He wants to try and do something to address the crime. He's asking for a change in the laws. She's not even talking about it. Mm. Okay? She just did this Buffalo Bills deal. She announced it four days before the budget was due to give a billion dollars to a big developer that happens to be a big donor of hers, a billion dollars, and it went through no public hearings. You know, I'm all for the Buffalo Bills. Great. They're the only New York team that's left. It, 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 you know, the Jets and the Giants are playing over in New Jersey. We love the Buffalo Bills. But why should it be the biggest taxpayer giveaway in the history of the NFL? They should have not done it out in the suburbs. They should have done it in downtown Buffalo and given the developer a chance to build restaurants and shops and offices and housing, and they could make money off of that, and then they could pay for their stadium with that money. Why should the taxpayers be putting up a billion dollars for eight home games out in the suburbs? It doesn't do any economic development. doesn't do anything for the rest of the state. So, uh, you know... But the Brian Benjamin thing, that she picked this guy, he had stuff swirling around him. She found out stuff about him, and she still pushed it through. So uh, yeah. whether it's crime, Buffalo Bills, the budget, not even talking about fixing the tax problem, she's failing. Damn, you want to go to some of the comments real quick. There you go. Uh, Sandra Cummins asks, uh, it, oh, she says, any plans to increase or sustain the current $2.5 million, uh, million mental health uh, school's budget, uh, early intervention is key. I agree 100%. Early event intervention is key. And let me tell you something. Mental health is real, okay? There's like 18, 19 million people in New York State. One and a half million people have a serious mental health issue. I'm not talking about like anxiety, nervousness. I'm talking about schizophrenia, bipolar, or severe depression. A million and a half people. And the people that have mental health problems that aren't taking their medication... They're the ones who are homeless. They're the ones who end up doing drugs or drinking that to, to compensate for their mental health problem that ends up with being in jail. Their mental health problems, drugs and alcohol, are a result in a lot of crime, poverty, homelessness, domestic violence, and all the other societal dysfunction. And it's very real. And we have to address it in a more comprehensive way. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, Nikisha, human service workers are greatly ignored, sometimes facing the same challenges as their clients. Uh, how can you help human service workers make a COLA permanent and automatic every year? I got to tell you, that's one of the scariest things is when you got somebody who's working in health and human services and the person on the other side of the window is they're, they're one step away from being in that position. That And they, they, they and they're they're mad and they're, they're why is this person? It, it, it doesn't result in good client relations. Right. Uh, and uh, the purpose of a salary is attract is to attract good people to the job. The salaries in positions like that have to be competitive. And quite frankly, many civil service workers in health and human service positions have less power than a lot of other public employee unions. So, you know, you guys are from, the two of you guys are from Nassau County. You know, the, we know the cops are paid like an extraordinary amount of money on Long Island, okay? Now, I support the cops. I believe in the cops. You got to go after the cops that break the rules and make sure they don't break the rules. But the salaries on Long Island are like some of the highest in America. So when I was county executive, I used to battle with the cops about their salaries because I we had a big financial crisis and we had to save money there so we could use it to fix up our health and human services. 
So you, we got to, we can't, if we, if we never gave a raise on Long Island to the police officers, you'd have 20,000 people apply for the G job every year for the next 10 years because everybody wants those jobs because they're paid so much money and it's public service. I mean, there's probably more morale problems now than there used to be, quite frankly, because of all the anti-police sentiment that, that's, that's out there. But civil service, social worker jobs, it's hard to get people to fill those jobs. That is the best and the brightest. You know, just being a, a do-gooder only goes so far. You got to pay people a job that makes them want to do the job and want to help the people. That's right. Yep, absolutely. Close we got there. Oh, so let me ask you a question, Tom. Um, but the big talk over the last few years, last few years, especially since 2020, was about reparations for black people. We see that other states are doing these studies. Would, well, if you become governor, will you allow there to be a study of reparations for people that was affected in New York State from slavery? And when the, if the studies come back of saying that it's founded that people should get reparations, will you be willing to pay our reparations? I'm, I'm looking up what the bill is. I, I am a co-sponsor of the bill in Congress on the Commission to Study and Develop Reparation Proposals for African Americans. I'm a co-sponsor of that bill. I quite frankly think it should be done at the, at the national level, uh, but it's unlikely that we'll get the votes to do it at the national level, because even if we pass it in the House, we will never get it done in the Senate. So I would consider doing it for New York State specifically uh, to, to study the issue and figure out what the impact is. But I think we should really do it as a national level. No doubt. Hey, listen, uh, we got a big thing that's happening now with Roe v. Wade. All right. So that's a big thing. Um, I know right now, just just a question. Do you think that there's something that we can do um, with regard to it? Um, is there is uh, maybe adjusting the number something as opposed to saying adjusting the number of justices on the Supreme Court? Is there something that we can do with um, restrictions or abortion rights or anything like that? Um, it's unlikely you're going to get any laws. We, they just had a vote today in the Senate. The House passed a law months ago to to take the what was the law under Roe v. Wade and make it legislation. It was passed in the House. But you can't, if you pass it in the House and you don't pass it in the Senate, it doesn't go anywhere. So they voted on it today and they voted against it in the Senate. All the Republicans and a couple Democrats too, or one Democrat voted against it. So we're not going to get it changed at the national level. Here in New York State, we have very uh, robust protections uh, at the state level. And, uh, you know, the idea is, is that, you know, abortion has to remain safe and legal and accessible. Um, you know, my mother was like, you know, a woman went to church every day and, uh, Catholic and I, I, she's passed away now. She was a wonderful woman. She lived till she was 93, but she was a registered nurse. And I used to talk to her about the issue of abortion. And she, you know, she didn't really want to talk about it. It's kind of uncomfortable. She's a Democrat, and but when I push came to shove and we discussed it in detail, she would say, "I don't want to go back." To, she was a registered nurse. She said, "I don't want to go back to the day when those witch doctors were were ruining young women's lives." And that's what it's really about. It's about you know, even if you make it illegal in certain states, people are still going to have abortions. So it's got to be safe and legal. So. Please. Yeah. Do you see it as more of a medical uh, concern or a personal rights concern? Personal rights concern. Hmm. You know, I heard someone say today, uh, a woman told me today, she said, I'm not pro-abortion, but I am pro-choice. And I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, I wanted to ask you a question I, right let now. Just, let me just say one thing about that. Mm -hmm. I want New York State to also be a leader in preventing unintended pregnancies because abortions come from mostly unintended pregnancies. So we should be working as a society to have less unintended pregnancies. And that's through education and contraception. So we should be educating people not to get pregnant if they don't want to have babies. And that's just, you know, we got to fight it, for, fight it from that way first. I agree with that. Let me, let me ask you, um, Tom, right now, maybe in my lifetime, I think probably the greatest divide between citizens and politicians, you know, the reputation of so many people. But the Trump administration, I saw a shift when it came to the way people campaigned, um, the, the different rhetoric. It seemed like people became, um, there was more of this visceral disdain between the parties. 
Um, how do you think uh, the, the last, you know, four or five years has impacted, um, probably the last six years has impacted um, politicians and, and politics at, at, at large? The effect it much, that? much worse, less civil, uh, just really much more base, you know, base by just gross. Um, you know, Hakeem Jeffries used to say, he said, uh, he says, not everybody who voted for Trump is a racist. He said, but every racist voted, voted for, Trump. for Trump. That's right. And so it's like, Fair point. You know, he just said a lot of mean stuff that, you know, I mean, leadership, I would have never said this when I was younger because I wouldn't have thought it was too simplistic a saying, but I really believe it. Leadership matters. How the president conducts themselves impacts kids, impacts people. If the president can do it, anybody can do it. And it's like, you know, just everything was name called. You know, listen, a lot of stuff he said was funny. You know, with he come up with clever names for people and stuff like that. But it's like, it was gross. We just debased our, the way our whole discourse was. And it's like, it was just, it's too much. It's, 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 it's had a tremendously negative impact on our level of discourse. And it should have something to do with qualifications too, right? I mean, we have this thing where we have celebrity, people want celebrities in office for whatever reason, but the stakes are too high. You should be qualified if you're going to, I, I always said, I don't think your first job in politics should be the highest office in the world. Listen, my whole campaign, I said, I want you to look at three things. One, who's a proven executive, okay? I've got the experience, I know how to run government. I, I, I've done it, I did my hours, I know, did my 10,000 hours, I know, I know how to run government. Two, I'm a common sense Democrat, and three, I'm running on the issues. But that first one, proven executive, I know how to run things, because I, and I run, it's not like, they say run government like a business. Government's not like a business. You can learn things from business about organizing things and holding people accountable and, you know, organizing things. That's very helpful. But you know what? In business, you don't have to worry about your opponents trying to cut your legs off every day. You don't have to worry about opening up the newspaper every morning to find out what they're writing about you in the newspaper. You don't have to, the same civil service and, 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 and union rules. You don't have, you know, in politics, in government, if you give, say you have a worker who comes in early every day, stays late, answers the phone politely, stays on budget, comes up with new ideas. If you give the person a bonus, they say Swazi gives money to crony. If a person walks up to you in the hallway and says, hey, Mr. County Executive, you stink. I'd never vote for you. You're awful. You fire that person. You get a lawsuit for political discrimination. So that's not like business. You can't incentivize people with bonuses. You can't fire people for being jerks. So it's a very different breed. You have to have a skill set to know how to do it. Time. So, Let me make sure I know you over your time. So you got a few more minutes. To... Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. Oh, you with us? Okay. All right. That's what I'm talking about, right, Tom. Let's roll. Let's roll. All right, Jamie, can you bring up a couple of questions? I want to make sure we get people in the audience that I see that they go ahead. There we go. All right. He says, what is your position on the Second Amendment? 14 million gun owners and a half are black women. Uh, we want to be able to defend ourselves and not be treated as criminals. Very heavy duty. So, listen, I believe in the Second Amendment that you're allowed to own a gun. You're allowed to own a gun to go hunting. You're allowed to own a gun to go for self-defense, that's the law. I mean, that's the way it is. But we have too many guns in America. We have more guns than people in the United States of America. And the proliferation of guns is a lot, is because of the, is, is a, one of the factors that results in so many people getting killed. Because, you know, if you have access to a gun so easily, there's going to be more kids shooting kids, gang members shooting gang members, people losing their temple and shooting their spouse. People having an accident in the house and shooting themselves, shooting their brother by accident. I mean, it's just there's just too many guns. But uh, you know, the status quo. The problem is, is that I've talked to a lot of like back, every ninety percent of Americans believe we should have background checks. Okay, any normal person says we should have background checks so that people with mental illnesses, people who have had felonies, people that you know. Should, certain people shouldn't have guns, okay? We have to have background. Terrorists should have background checks. 90% of Americans favor it. You talk to one of my Republican colleagues, even if they're like normal, good people, and you say, listen, 90% of the people want background checks. You got to vote for that. I said, I can't. I said, why? I'll lose in the primary. Mm -hmm. The problem is 
Can I can I talk for a few minutes? This is a very important point. Absolutely, yeah, bro. You got you got all the time. You got all the time, brother. There's 435 seats in Congress. Mm -hmm. Of the 435 seats of Congress, 380 of the seats are safe seats. You can't lose because they're the districts are drawn. They're gerrymandered. They put all the Republicans over here. They put all the Democrats over here. 190 Republican seats, 190 Democratic seats, not exact, but around that, are safe seats. The Republicans are going to win the Republican seat. The Democrats are going to win the Democratic seat. You can't lose. That's why Congress has a 15% approval rating, but 90% get reelected. How can that be? So it's because they're in these safe seats. The only way, you, so when you're in a safe seat, you don't listen to the people. You don't have to listen to the people. You're not accountable. It's one of the biggest problems in politics. People are not accountable. That's why we have so much corruption in New York State. The only way you could lose this safe seat is by losing a primary. Nobody votes in the primaries. Less than 15% of the people vote in the primaries. Who does vote in the primaries? For the Democrats, it's the far left. For the Republicans, it's the far right. It's the extreme fringes that vote in the primaries. So the people in the safe seats who are only worried about losing a primary, not worried about losing the general election, they pander to the extremists. When you hear the crazy stuff that some Republicans say, the cra some crazy stuff that some Democrats say, they're pandering to the small groups of fringe people that are controlling the elections because they're the ones who are voting. The key to getting people to listen, to get the politicians to listen to the people, the key to getting some, some people working together, forcing them to work together, is for the people to vote, especially in these primaries, because it would force the politicians to listen to the people. So when I say I'm a common sense Democrat, they say, oh, you know, you're talking about crime and taxes. That's what the people care about. The problem is most politicians don't think you'll win in a primary based upon that because the fringes don't want you talking about crime and taxes. So uh, so we got to get the people. What, what am I doing on your show? OK, what am I doing on your show? I'm on your show because I, I know you got normal people that are watching your show that are care. They care. They wouldn't be. What are they doing it? 10, 12 at night listening to your show. What are they listening to? Because they care. But they're not political hacks. They're not the people that are part of the system, part of the establishment. And I'm trying to get them to say, listen to this guy, Tom Swazi. He's like a regular guy that wants to help people and do the right thing. I need you to help me. If you hear me and you say, oh, I like this guy, Tom Swazi. He seems like a good guy. I need you to tell your friends and tell your neighbors and get people to vote on June 28th in the Democratic primary, even if you don't normally do it, and help me to win. Mm -hmm. If you hear me and you say, I don't like this guy, Tom Swazi. I came on to here to the, the, the let's chop it up and who's this white guy? What's he doing? I don't like this guy. He's no good. Then just keep it to yourself. Don't say anything. <laughs> now we're going to tell, tell the people you are, you are albino. <laughs> 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 now, uh, uh, real quick, so I got I got two more questions for myself personally. Then, yeah. so um, like we were talking about business and growing, like one thing we saw, like the most uh, the the entrepreneurship, right? And the people that grew up in entrepreneurship and is doing very well in entrepreneurship is black women. What are your goals of building black businesses in the state of New York? That uh, uh, and, and and if you look like the governor, you know, the state of New York has a tremendous amount of money. The government, okay, it's one of the biggest, but it's too big, quite frankly, but. it's $220 billion. We give out a lot of contracts to people. We have to make sure that when we give out contracts with government money, we're giving it to people who look like the people of New York State. So you have to make sure we're giving out contracts to minority and women-owned businesses so that you can build businesses using that power of the government contracts. In addition, there's a guy named James Sanders, who's a senator in Southeast Queens, no, He's yep. talking about a, a that's, that's where I live at, Tom. I'm in Southeast. Go ahead. My mother grew up in St. Albans. Oh, so you're around the corner. Tell us what's yeah. up. She went to Andrew Jackson High School. <laughs> she went to Jackson. Your mother yeah. can fight. Your mother can fight. Jackson was rough. <laughs> Jackson was rough. Your mother can fight. Your mother can fight. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, uh, he's got an idea to do a, a public bank. So take some of the deposits. Take a hundred million dollars, two hundred, some number of state money, and deposit it and create a public bank. And the mission of the public bank is to provide financing for minority owned businesses so they can get government contracts, so they can build up the business. Because a lot of times access to capital 
is a big thing that stops black and brown businesses from getting off the ground. Same thing with home ownership, same thing. With, so, so create a public bank with government money. Even get private minority-owned banks uh, or credit unions to run it, run it for you. But use state money to, to create a mission of getting black and brown businesses off the ground. Um, my next question, and then I'll let the brothers ask more questions. Now that the laws, we see now the laws have changed about marijuana. See people now, Jersey's getting all that New York money. Everybody's over there going over there to go buy weed. And like and nowadays, I want, I, I'm, I'm for legalizing marijuana because I, I believe that the street weed now is killing our young youth with that fentanyl and all that kind of stuff they mix in the drugs. What is your plan on supporting people that were incarcerated because of weed and now they want to get into the marijuana business, but they make the, the, the cost of getting into the marijuana business is astronomically high for, for people like myself. or I'm, I'm never been incarcerated, but I'm talking about people that look like me to get into this business. What's your plan on that? And do you, are, you for, are you for legalizing the marijuana industry in, in New York State? I'm for legalizing. I've actually voted for it at the, at the federal level because it's, it's all a mishmash throughout the country right now. Um, you know, I'm concerned, like a lot of people are concerned that it, it's going to be, whether it's going to be a gateway to other drugs or not. Um, but the problem with, with marijuana arrests over the years is a lot of black and brown people were arrested and a lot of white people weren't for the exact same uh, possession. So we got to figure out how to, by legalizing marijuana, you're decriminalizing it. You're going to keep a lot of people out of jail for low level offenses. Number two, you got to try and help people who got caught up in that system to make have a better life. Now, I don't like the idea of, of uh, helping dealers and people who had massive quantities getting a, a break, but I do like the idea of helping people who got possession uh, of fences getting, getting a break. And the public bank I'm talking about could be used for the exact same thing. Okay. So, um, sorry, I'm going to slip in. Anybody's toes. Anybody had another question? Yeah, I'd like to ask this question. We talk about people leaving New York, and some of my closest friends uh, graduated uh, Amityville High. Uh, most of them uh, left, I would assume. Is there any way to bring people to our state, to our city, create you know new economic jobs, technological jobs? Is there is there a plan for that? Something that you would think of? We got to reduce taxes. We got to reduce regulation. And we got to create more connections between the city of New York and the rest of the state. You were talking about that earlier. So that you can take some of the, so like, for example, okay. Someone just told me, I'm going to Buffalo this weekend. Okay. Buffalo's got a major crime problem. Uh, uh, Rochester has a major crime problem too, you should know. Um, but I'm going to Buffalo this weekend. And there's a Bangladeshi community where like 100,000 Bangladeshis left Queens and moved to Buffalo and took over neighborhoods that were just completely wiped out. And they like bought houses at foreclosure for like $5,000 and it was $10,000, it was $40,000, now it's like $80,000. But they turn around these communities. We need to create, be creating connections between the city and these other places in the state where things are very affordable by comparison as far as, uh, land and houses uh, and even property taxes, which they'll say is too high up there, but they're nothing like they are down here uh, and create jobs in those areas where you connect the entrepreneurs uh, to those places in, in high skilled, high tech, but also in basic manufacturing. But those businesses will not locate there if the taxes are too high or the regulation is too over overwhelming, but you got to create a connection between the, I believe the city and downstate and upstate because it's big up. I think the best opportunities for the future of New York are actually north of Putnam and Rockland County because the land is cheaper and there's great open space and there's old, beautiful cities that are just derelict now that have just been abandoned. Gotcha. Mm. So, Tom, I'm going to go before I'm, I'm going to let you wrap. I got one last question. My name is sports teams Islanders or Rangers? Islanders. Yankees or Mets? Mets, 100%. My son is playing for the Brooklyn Cyclones right now. That's what's up. That's why I'm a big baseball fan. Nice. nice. Giants, Jets, or Bills? Well, I grew up a Jets fan, but I got to be a Bills fan now because they're the only ones in New York. <laughs> okay, can you bring them back? Can you bring our teams back? 
The Jets and the Giants? I thought at least it was Just the Jets. Just the Jets. Yeah, I, I don't think I can pull that off. <laughs> <laughs> Knicks or Nets? I'm, I'm, you know, I grew up on Long Island, and uh, Dr. J was out here when I was a kid growing up. Yep. But I've been a Knicks fan for the past probably 10 or 20 years. That's what's up. So, Tom, you're going to have the final word, final say, let the people know where can they find you at what you need to do for Listen, I really appreciate the to be on your show. Thank and, you. Uh, listen, I just want to, I want to, I'm giving up Congress. I could stay in Congress for a long time, probably get reelected. And I'm giving up a very prestigious, important job, great honor, great responsibility. And I'm, I'm running for governor on a long shot to try and turn the state around and try and help people to try and help these families who can't pay their bills, to try and help these kids getting left behind in school, to get to try and help these folks that are getting ripped apart from crime. Uh, I, I, I'll try and help the mayor in New York City to do the things he wants to do. He's getting held hostage up mm -hmm. at the state level. Uh, I, I want to just do the right thing. I've got a great running mate. His name is Diana Reyna. She was a city councilwoman in, the, in Brooklyn for 12 years. She was a, a deputy borough president to Eric Adams for four years. Her husband's a lieutenant in the New York City Police Department. She got a good heart. When she's elected, she'll be the first Latina ever elected statewide in the history of New York State. And we just want to help the people. And we're fighting against the, the machine. And I need the people to help me. I need the people who are watching this show to please, if you like what I'm saying, spread the word. And like I said before, if you don't like what I'm saying, just go to sleep and forget about me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. So listen, I really appreciate you. And uh, please, set June 28th is the day to vote. June 28th, Democratic primary for governor of the state of New York, Tom Swazi, S-U-O-Z-Z-I, Swazi for NY. That's got a great. heart for people. It's got the skills to get the job done. Tom, you got a website you want to tell us about where to donate money to and stuff like that? Swazi for NY. Swazi is S-U-O-Z-Z-I. Swazi for NY. Are you on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, anything like everything. that? Everything. Well, everything. All everything. right. Just your name, Tom Swazi, we'll find you. Everybody, yep. people can find you. Okay, cool. Tom, listen, man, we thank you. We appreciate you. Like to give it to the people raw. That's what I think everybody likes about you. And I truly appreciate you coming on our show. Um, we welcome back when if you win at the June, if it goes to pass of you, you know, we hey, will wait this for you, brother. Thank it's you a big brother. deal that you guys let me on for as long as you did, and I really appreciate it. Okay. Thank you for your time. Oh. Thank you for your time, man. Appreciate you, man. Good night, dude. Thank you, man. Peace, 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 peace. Appreciate you. Appreciate All right. you. All right. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Rodney in the middle. There we at. Where you at? Rodney in the middle. Things. We gonna stop. It always be Rodney first. I'm tired of that Rodney first. <laughs> I keep telling you, Kelvin, your agent ain't right. Your agent is not right. <laughs> And sorry to everybody for the comments, man. We went over, actually, we went over the time probably about 20 something minutes. And I know we have more comments. We're sorry for that. Um, but this was good talking to. And we'll, we could come back at the, the other side of the commercial because you know what? We old. We in our 50s. We need to go to the bathroom. So let me, like, we're just, I mean, can you take us a for commercial real. break? I'm in my 40s, by the way. I'm, I'm holding still, on I, last. I'm, I'm I'm only, I only got like 30 something days left. And I'm <laughs> I'm Dawn Kelly, daughter of Joan Kelly, granddaughter of Margaret Ackerman, and founder and CEO of The Nourish Spot. I'm a native New Yorker, born in Harlem and raised in Queens. The community connects to The Nourish Spot through a number of ways, one of which is through my family's 60 years of long-standing roots in this community. My grandfather uh, purchased the first home in our family here in Jamaica. We connect to the community through our employees. We have a number of young black and brown uh, men and women that mask up and glove up to come to work every day so that we can assemble customized fruits and vegetables into what customers want. And so I'm really happy that we have such a great team and I thank them every day for their dedication and fortitude.
COVID-19 has caused a lot of small businesses like myself to close. And so we're very happy that what we've been able to do is pivot. And so instead of allowing individuals to walk into our store, we have set up a, a QR code, we set up a curbside pickup, and we have a heavier reliance on our food delivery service at Partners. So in my opinion, resilience means, you know, taking challenges by the horn, if you will, and kind of wrangling them and navigating them in order to continue, uh, in our case, serving the community. The Nourish Spot is all in, all in Queens. Welcome back to Let's Chop It Up, please. Uh, with Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. I can subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend, and make the comments the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I'm sorry, like I said before, to everybody, we couldn't get to all the questions, and you know, but hopefully you enjoyed the show and enjoyed Tom. I thought Tom came was all to himself. Appreciate this time for coming on like that. What do you guys think? It was dope, man. Yeah. You know, um, I'm glad that you took the time, man, and, and I'm glad we got a chance to sit down and, and 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 really chop it up with them you know um um i hope everybody listening or watching uh felt like you got something from it um i think max says has something he he, he wished he wanted to go and kind of more into the gun ownership thing but thank you, know. you ladies thank you for support thank you Sophia. Yeah. yeah thank you ellen yep thank you everybody for 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 hanging with us and whatnot so yeah mm -hmm. so I, I mean I, I i you know i think it was yeah thank you very much thank Dawn. you Dawn. yeah yeah, definitely. Thank you, Dawn. Yeah, so um, yeah, um, yeah, like you said, Max, like couldn't get all the stuff. I know people. What do you say? He said, "Sorry, he was dancing. He never asked a question. He's a gun ownership uh uh question." Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah. So you no know, Second Amendment question. Max is harder. Anybody want to get down with Max, man? man? Listen, my man Max trains people. We're talking about firearms. He does train people how to uh, shoot, uh, use firearms. So get at my man right there. But but you know what? I will give him a lot of credit for a lot of that was off script. Like, like you oh, know, yeah. you yeah, usually there's a bunch of yeah, yeah. Usually there's a bunch of you know. What I'm saying people put in some parameters, but no, he, I mean, he just really came off the top, and I mean, I think that's impressive to actually show up. And I mean, he could have gone on bigger platforms. This platform, you know, to actually come and speak directly to our audience and our community, I think that was major. I think that you know, watching him on his commercials, I don't really see attack ads with him. I think he lived genuinely. His ads have been kind of because I don't get into the whole attack ad thing. To me, as yeah. You know, I'm, I'm done with all that. Everybody wants to know what you're going to do. And at the end of the day, um, I want to know that you have a plan. You know, I mean, I know we've heard a lot of the same talking points over the years, but I mean, I I, I think there's a likability to them. And, you know, I think there's a kind of a transparency as well. Yeah, Dawn says he did his support. Yeah, he, he did say he supported the Second Amendment first. That's what that's what Max. Yeah, well, I, yeah. I took I took it as that he kind of senses that everybody shouldn't have a gun unless, you know, you have a gun that's licensed for hunting or rifle or whatever. But I, I kind of got the impression that he doesn't believe that everybody should have a gun. Yeah, no, he's literally, you know, <laughs> he's, he, you know, you said there's more people. Where I work at, they better not have a gun. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree with him. I don't think everybody should have a gun. Yeah. Work around the so, yeah. I think the big <laughs> issue has always been the whole automatic weapons thing, too. And my point is these manufacturers, at some point, how does a gun get from the warehouse to the to the 13 year old without mm -hmm. the, you know what I'm saying? That's the, that's the big issue. Like Rodney said before about these coming in through the airport. So however they're coming in, mm -hmm. stop, you know, we got to deal with that. Now, one thing I did like is the part about trying to be, you know, kind of pragmatic, take an approach to things. You know, where we can talk about abortion. That's the issue. Also put some <laughs> emphasis in the, the, you know, the kids that are out here having unwanted pregnancies to try to help them is educate. And those stats about, um, you know, the mental health issues in a lot of schools. Yeah, we don't catch this stuff early. 
you know, th th this stuff has to be addressed early and that money has to be divvied up where people can get resources in communities. Yeah, he said, uh, great show, guys. I'll move back to New York so I can vote for him. <laughs> but no, I think I Take think it easy, Danny. Take it easy. <laughs> I did I, for me. I maybe I think I don't know what Max so, but I think he did say about for hunting and self defense. Yeah, that's what he I said. said, he said yeah, that, I think yeah. he, did, he did say that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah he said yeah, that. He said that. Yeah, he said because cool. that's the law. Which, but is. he did mention protection as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He said yeah. that in that protecting your home. <clears throat> right. Yeah, I didn't yeah. see anything wrong with what he said. You know, I say that. You got to be careful with that protection. And, and, and that's a whole nother show. I don't want to keep going yeah. on the gun control. Stuff. Yeah, that's a whole yeah, other, yeah. We, could, we could have. We could bring if somebody want to bring some components of it. I know Max would love to be on that part. And I thought so, D, I thought you asked. I, first of all, I thought you guys did a great job. I I, I love the questions. And, and D, I thought your questions was direct. Um, I'll say this with D. D not gonna change nobody, and I feel that D is gonna be real. He's gonna be D and D like, well, no, look, look, do you have a black agenda, things like that? And yeah. again, your record does speak. Now, I mean, we all know the man's bio. I have to say, and I'm big on the qualification thing, he has done some stuff. Like he has he has really, really done some things because whatever you do, I do believe you need to be qualified. That part about being an executive, we suffer from a lot, a lack of leadership. And I think the other thing we suffer from is the greed, you know, and he's right. I mean, you think about what we went through with Spitzer, the the um, uh, Cuomo being unceremoniously dismissed. I mean, we've had a lot of corruption up in Albany. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Don. Thank you. It's going to continue. Yeah. It's going to continue. Yeah, but we got to get rid of that. So those people used to hang out with me. That's why they corrupt. That was a long, long time. Benjamin, Benjamin used to make it rain. <laughs> D, I'm going to tell you, D, D had a Freudian slip. It, it, it wasn't funny, but I'm like, only D. The man was like, my mother died. And she from St. Albans. D's like, tell I said, what's up? I know, I know, I know, I know. I know, I know. <laughs> I know that's a Freudian slip. I know D was wow. like. I feel bad. I feel like he's a <laughs> No, nah, but it's instinctive. It's instinctive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah, think, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah I said, yeah. D is funny, man. Yeah, she's funny. still looking. She's my his mom's still looking down on. Him, so we can say what's. Yeah, yeah, definitely no. But I, but I, I appreciate you know just the the because some people won't come on and some people won't come on unless you got ten thousand people guaranteed and all that stuff like that. Talk to people because this is the level right here. This is the level. You're talking to people that are homeowners. You're talking about people that go to work every day. You're talking about people that, that get their naps in when they feel like it. You know, you get a lot of, you got a lot of good people on, on this. I, <laughs> right I, I listen. There you go. <laughs> are you talking about me, Kelvin? I, I, I'm putting everybody in it. Some of us get that nap. Some of us can't get that nap, you know. Yeah. <laughs> No, I but agree, no. Kelvin, man. Yeah, absolutely. We may not be a lot, but we're very representative, man. No question. Demographic no man. question. I so, definitely man. believe in the quality over quantity, yeah. especially in this platform. But no, I'm that that was big, and, and and thank you, D. Also, um, inviting him. That was that was excellent. Yeah. You know, and you guys are just really well connected and things like that. And people will look at this. People will chop it up. People will scrutinize it, which people do. You know, the the New York media will check it out. And that's just what it is. Whatever they say is a matter of record. And that's it. And I do believe in accountability. That's the whole thing. I put you in office, then I want you to go represent my interest. And if you don't, then I want to put someone else in. That's just what it should be. You know, but I like the way he broke some things down to say why you get this gridlock. Some of the stuff is just already set. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and anybody on Long Island, anybody on Long Island, especially you, you current homeowners on Long Island, anytime you mention taxes, <laughs> you, anytime you, look, you mention property taxes, <laughs> you're the highest property, property taxes in the Start nation. Twitching. Yeah, Start yeah, you know what I'm here, saying. Man. Yeah, that, I mean, we almost lost the Islanders because they were like, you know, want the yeah. tax bill, bill, you know, taxpayers to pay it. People were like, we're not paying nothing else yeah. on Long Island regarding the taxes. Listen, we just happy that we just happy when they don't go up. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's, right. that's that's well, you, that's major. Just thank you, Dawn. Thank you for that. Thank, thank you, thank you Dawn. Absolutely, we all you, representation. You, yeah, thank you. And thank you can only write off like ten grand of your taxes if it's over that. You can't write the rest off. <laughs> no, no. What it is is this: you got you got to make sure you clarify it with Rob. Riley, look up, put them eyebrows up. What was that? <laughs> Good night, Sandra. Thanks for tuning in thank with you, us. Thank you. Thank you. But um, but um, what I like, what I, one thing I like in you know, working the schools and stuff like that. And if Tom, if you still listening, if people still listening, anytime you talk about bringing nonprofits into schools and stuff like that, I'm, I'm going to be down for something like that because I think we need more wraparound services, and the nonprofits are building that village around surrounding those kids and stuff like that. With the community school, so I'm all down for that. I love that answer. Yeah. That that was the this one of the best answers I heard from a politician because a lot of people don't understand the power of of a nonprofit working with the kids. We know the kids more. We let the teachers do it, go teach. 
Let the teachers go do, and the principal go do the other stuff. Let us handle the social emotional issues of the young people. And but see, he, spoke, he spoke to what we were actually yeah. talking about earlier. You know what I mean? The conversation we were having regarding, you know, um, the time you spend with your children and, and, and everything, you know, and versus what they get when they go to, you know, when they go to school. So I, I, I felt like, you know, that was, that was incredible and, and, and very timely. You, you know, know what I believe, Derek? I always believe wherever you can help a young person, and they don't have to be a relative or whatever. If ever you can give something positive to a young person, do it. People don't know. That's how D and I became close. Sitting <laughs> yep. in the barbershop. I, I worked yep. with youth. I worked for youth for 20 years. D did it as a profession. And we connected like that. That's how yep. we became friends. Just yep. sitting in the barbershop talking in the land of the natives, too. I'm talking we in the lion's den of natives. Oh, but we would yeah, always I mean, have Rob, these Rob, Rob will be there sometime. Rob will be there. With the, Rob will be there rolling hot. Oh, Rob was there. <laughs> I used to I used to be in the barber shop before I stopped getting haircuts. Yeah, <laughs> you know, in the barber shop? I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, I used yeah. to. Um, Pete used to cut my hair. Oh, I never knew that, Rod. Wow, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. But um, <laughs> me and D used to be. <laughs> Look at Monique. <laughs> She's waiting on to stop, Rob. <laughs> that was funny. That was going, Ronnie. Nah, we when we me and D used to meet up at the barber shop. We used to always get into heavy conversations in the barber shop, and you know. Sometimes, like you would realize, like the natives was amongst us. But the thing is, me and D were staying strong. And you yep. know, we were, we were, we were, I know why to, I didn't see we Rod. We were questioning their intelligence. We were back to back. There I you know why you, D. I know why I didn't see Rod. You know why? Because his right. barber came on time. That's yeah, why. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, you, went, you went to Kurt. Me and yeah, right, me right, y'all was still in the words, right? <laughs> right. Y'all, y'all was able to get successful. Uh, <laughs> y'all got hey, in and out. Bring, bring up a couple of comments back again. I, I'm sorry we were talking. I want to make sure you could be good. I think it was Dawn said a few things. Yeah, she mentioned. Uh, she said, "Yeah, you all are the perfect representation of New York City and New York State." Yeah, thank you, thank you. I agree, thank, thank you. you. And the campaign needs people to tell others to vote and vote for him on June twenty eighth. And then she dropped his uh his website again, swazi for ny Yeah, man. I love the Dawn. We can sit down with a one on one. That'd be great. Love to sit down. Kel, don't lean <laughs> back too far with that Christmas look. <laughs> I can barely get it out, man. <laughs> oh man! Yo, oh, yo, yo, yo you know what I'm doing? I'm, I'm calling, I'm calling Swaz and you tell him I want some some bullying uh, prevention tactics in place. <laughs> oh, yo, I do be thinking about this joint though. This joint is true though. Okay, yeah, right. <laughs> I want y'all to know, by the way, out there, I'm not home. I want y'all to know that I'm not home. All right, I want y'all to. I'm in. I'm in Manhattan. So y'all, that's how y'all do it, bro. <laughs> Yo, Dina always got one in the chamber, boy. She got. She always got a joke, man. She always got a joke. Christmas. <laughs> oh man. So all right. So, well, what we, Jamie, what are we going to give it to me again, Jamie? Which one you want in order, real quick? So I know what I'm talking about, man. So I can lead the people. Doing hip hop. No, oh, Morris Brown College Ooh, got his accreditation back again, man. Shout out to Morris Brown getting the Congratulations, back, Morris Brown. Congratulations. Sure, they, they, they struggled. Them. That's they, right. Let me tell somebody. anybody out there, we need to support them. If you don't have the grades for, for, for Spellman or Morehouse or Clark, please go to Morris Brown. It is an excellent, excellent place. If you can't get in those prestigious schools. No, I'm joking. Honestly, Morris Brown is still in the AU Center. And um, back in the back in the nineties, you, you needed a C a C to get in, so they were working. Oh yeah, that's cool, kid. Oh, oh, that's cool. You good know good what? Night. For the first time, I deserve it. I the first time, I deserved that scroll because I didn't have to do that. I know I was wrong. Uh, this was a good occasion. I, I I want to apologize to Morris Brown. Congratulations. I remember because I was one of the people that couldn't get in more in, in Morehouse. So I, I I understand it. So no, definitely congratulations to them. We need yeah. to preserve these historically black colleges and universities at all costs we we really do and um for them to get that back and people thought it was a long shot actually they thought it would never come back so the fact that they got it congratulations mm. yeah and i know some of those buildings morris brown's going to some problems because some of that stuff started looking like you know it's abandoned looking buildings and stuff like yeah. that and i appreciate the people i appreciate the professors that stayed and taught those young mm. people that this day yeah. why, why they were still there and shout out to like morehouse and Spelman. i think some of those kids were able to take classes at other schools around i mean in clark but so, D, let me ask you a question. What happens when you lose your accreditation? What happens to the degree? 
a non accredited degree. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa Crazy. That's true. That's true. You got the scroll voice for the sister. In the name of the name Jesus Scroll. <laughs> Yo, that's classic. Yo, classic. That's this classic. this is I'm telling you the sharpest writers yo, on ass, any yo, platform they, on yo, this yo, show. Ass, man. God, that was fast. I mean, Dino, what are you good with yours? You grew up with some. I'm talking about yo, some. Yo, some people that got quick. Got to be fast, man. Yeah, man. Gotta be fast. Got to be fast. Yeah, Brad, man. chicken wing, Monique, and Lisa. <laughs> you got to have one in the chain, but quick, long. Yeah. You got to have one ready, man. <laughs> yeah. they, coming, they coming for your neck. Protect your neck. Oh, man. So, you got to be practicing. It's in the day before for this show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jamie, what we, Jamie, what we, Jamie, bring up something, man. I don't know where we going. I don't know. We off the, we just here. <laughs> oh, Lincoln College set to close permanently. Lincoln oh, College yeah. in, in Illinois is uh, the only the first historical black college in the state of Illinois, right? Something like that. Well, they they said it was the first uh, historically black college named after Lincoln while Lincoln was still alive. Correct. Which that's interesting if you think about it. I mean, what was going on while he was alive that you could even have a um black, black institution? Yeah. So a after the Emancipation Proclamation, they must have opened up that week or something. Yeah, same day. Same day. Because he didn't make it that long. <laughs> and, and the thing is, like, how was they going to school? How was they going to school? That's what I'm free. saying, right? You know what I'm saying? I'm surprised the Confederate soldiers wasn't blocking the door or something. No, that's Lincoln. Yeah. That's Lincoln University's in PA. I thought the same thing, Don. I went. I've been. I've been a lot of. I've never been to Lincoln College. I've been to Lincoln University. Well, at least, at least they didn't say Brooklyn. So, <laughs> <laughs> but what happens? PA, I want to know Brooklyn. what happens to that property. What happens to those buildings? Probably some developers gonna come in and scoop it up. Right. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Like you would love to see another yeah. historically black college come and invest um, in there. Go Okay, well, Dang, <laughs> before I finish any sentence, I get the two weeks. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Kelvin said the best. Like, we got a lot of rappers spending, um, what you want to call it, all this money on bullshit and stuff like that. Not just rappers. He's talking about entertainers. Black people, we could keep a university open like that and ran well. But this school suffered because of the They never recovered from the pandemic. Let's keep it mm, dark. No. They, didn't, they, didn't they had a cyber attack, too. They got a cyber attack that wiped them out, too. So it's like you know, I don't. They, they probably lost their whole endowment. So it's like you know, let, let's Dawn. I'm with you, Dawn. See, Dawn's a business one. Believe it. That's the nurse spot right there, Dawn man right there. Nurse spot. The commercial we play every week. That's my sister, Dawn right there. Shout out for Dawn. Dawn, I didn't forget about them collard green flavored smoothies. I'll be over there soon. I'm gonna be over there soon. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't. I can't support that because um, I went. To, you know, I went to UCLA, right? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Know. University of the corner of Linux Ave. That's where I was. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's where I got my education from. So I can't support, you know, Lincoln and Morehouse and all that. You know, but that's where I went to school at. You know what? I sent me this thing. Somebody sent me a thing. It says, "Stop naming your children Paris and London when they look like uh, something in Archer." <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I was like, they knew they was wrong. Oh, <laughs> they was wrong. oh man, oh man, that's hilarious, man. Uh, shout out to that. Uh, so, Jamie, what we bring next? So we got uh, give it to me, oh, Kevin Samuels. That's right. I did, uh, oh. with Billy part part of brother Kevin Samuels passed away this past week from a parent heart attack. Um, very controversial brother. He only had a 1.4 million viewers. A lot of women were upset with Kevin over the years, but I think people forget when Kevin first started, he used to get on a uh, men too. But he was one thing Kevin stood on, like Ronnie would say, he stood on the square. He stood on the uh, square. Uh, people didn't like what he had to say. He had his opinion about certain things. Um, I don't think I don't like the way people handle his death and saying like a, that's good for him and all that kind of stuff like that. I don't think that's that's fair. The man didn't do nothing to harm anybody, any right of policy to harm anything. Only thing was hurt a couple of feelings. Yeah, yeah. You know, so any thoughts on my brother? No, I well, I think I, I I saw a lot of the comments that people said about um, Kevin Samuels and some of the comments. Are much worse than some of the shit that he said, you know. So I mean, you don't you don't step on a man like in his death. If you didn't like him, then you shouldn't have just watched the show. A lot of people, you know, some of the stuff he said, I didn't agree with it. But let's face the facts: a lot of women were still following Ke Kevin Samuels, and they were getting a lot of advice from him that th people actually went with. You know, he woke a lot of people up to some degree, and he offended a lot of people. That's what kind of like he was like a shock jock. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, Kevin Samuels went out like a trooper, though. I mean, that's the best way to go out, in my opinion, you know. Yeah, 
He didn't. He didn't start. <laughs> he, <laughs> I'm up, I'm up, bro. Somebody else getting the scroll. I know we got a few uh, moments. I didn't, Somebody else get I didn't say that. No, you didn't. Didn't you didn't. Right. But but no, I feel scroll ish. The wind of scroll <laughs> yeah, is coming. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. he went out the same way he came into this world. Correct. He, he, did. he was he was <laughs> up in the pussy. <laughs> Roll him. No, come hey, on. Man. Hey, that's what happened. <laughs> but that's what happened. Though. I'm calling for it. I'm calling for it. I'm calling for it. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Crab to the barrel. Oh. He ain't going to be by myself. <laughs> well, since I got one, I might as well. No, Rod. No, Rod. No, Rod. No, Rod. No, Rod. No, Rod. No, no. Nah. Her shit was killer. Her shit was killer. Oh, shit. Oh, here you go. Yo, Fuck he it. always gets the two for one sale. Uh-uh, yeah, nah, yeah. nah, he get another <laughs> scroll. Nah, yeah, he get another scroll. Yeah, yeah, Ronnie yeah. always get that 50% off. No, nah, he get yeah, two yeah, for yeah, one. Yeah. I, I get two right. for one. Or fifty percent discount, <laughs> or the two for six. That's what I do. <laughs> uh, I, well, I will say this. I'll say this. I, I think um, Dale Hughley really, really summed it up the best. And um, he was kind of going through something that I always say: how you know the word eulogy means to speak well of. You cannot change in death what people did in life. You just can't do it. And so, if you had, if people felt you had disdain for them, they're going to reflect that even when you die. You know, I heard some people say, "Oh, but he had a mother. Hitler had a mother." Regardless, whatever it is, really people happened. gonna the way people feel about you, that's just it. I'll just say this. I don't want to live a life where I lay down and die and people speak about me like that. And it just sounded bad, I, I have to admit. Now, to Rodney's point, I don't know what made people just go back. I mean, the man would come up there and tell you you're overweight, you ain't you can't do no better, don't even try to get somebody because you ain't worth it and you were disposable, and they would be right there. Some people is almost addicted to the punishment. And it's just like, I just felt the man didn't have any love for women. You know, I'm not talking about, to me, I come from an era where you had love for women, not a tolerance for women. Like, you loved women. I just didn't see it. I just thought the dude had, a, a you know, no. an extra grind with women. I, I, don't know I saw it. He, he, he showed us how he went out. I mean, he liked women. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they said, her, they said her shit was the bomb. Cause she was killer. She was a killer. Boom. Or, Boom. You know what's so funny? The funny thing is, mad dudes will probably try to holler. You know, dope things like, yo. yo, when they get that dope and they get knocked out. Yeah, pass that shit. Yeah, pass it. Yo, what's her number? What's her Instagram? Yeah, they're going to be all over. She's going to blow. She's going to have a fans only page. And, and, and she was blowing. Yeah, she was blowing. Yeah, she was doing it. No, no, uh uh-uh. uh. No, uh-uh. no, uh-uh. no, 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 no. What time is it? No, no, no. The thing must be stuck. Thank you. Thank you. I Yo, she was the definition of put it on them. That's what she did. She put it on them. But, but no, so funny. Some people say, like I said, uh, Doctor Boyce Watkins say that really Kevin kind of did die alone because he was dead. He died. He rather be he said he, for himself. He said he yeah. wanted to be married, die with a woman. Somebody's gonna take care of him. He, if he's you know if he's down and out, you can tell the hospital, tell people what to do. He died with a total stranger because he met the chick the night he before. He did, and he and he died. So they say technically he kind of died alone, he but he died a fun way. But no, I don't see it that way. Go. I no, think no, no. he died very happy. <laughs> I think he was very happy when he passed. I, well, I, I, wanna, I, I, wanna, I like living. I like, I'm like. i happy live. I'm going to be honest <laughs> with you. She right now really probably would be an interview that people would probably oh, really. Yeah. Like she could probably start oh, her yeah. own platform right now. No doubt. And tell you she got the code, like she got, you know what I mean? And that's this a, what it is. She could do a book like this, what he told me on the last day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, that's just what it is. But yeah. yeah, I mean, first of all, just being a human, you like condolences to the people that love them. I mean, yeah. there's somebody there's somebody that loved him and they're grieving, and that's what it is. As far as him, I mean, I didn't really care for the man, but I mean, that's just, you know, that's just what it is. There, there's a lot of guys out there that want to know where they where he found her. Cause I mean. She she's popping. I mean, inquiring minds want to know. Yeah, inquiring minds want to know. But it, it's a lot of black women got upset that he wasn't with a non-black woman. Mm. So what? You no, know, I, I don't you know, get it. You can't have it both ways. Make a decision. I think, but it did was it probably it, it probably threw salt in the wound to feel like he criticized us. You know, it was like when black women found out Tiger Woods, all the women you cheated with, not one of them was black. Like you couldn't even have nobody on the side. That's like, like <laughs> my man just had. That doesn't surprise know. me though. That doesn't, no, that doesn't surprise no. me about Tiger Woods. It didn't nah. surprise me about Seven 
Kevin Samuels. Now, the thing is, we don't know about other women he's been with. I'm pretty sure there may be some black women on the list that he's been with or whatever. We just have he just happened to get, you know, caught on this one yeah, yeah. because he, he went out on this one. You know, and the, thing, and the thing is, people, women got to understand. Listen, the me, he just met the night before. That was an ass call. That's a jump off. That was that was not his woman. Like he's going yeah. to parade around. Jump-off. She was into him. Like when you famous, you know how it is, man. You're gonna get you have options. You can pick the yeah. pick, pick the rainbow, you know, yeah, and, yeah. And, you know, and do that kind of thing. So, that's, 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 he, so he took her he took her back to the hotel room to evaluate her. He wanted to basically <laughs> raise her status. Derek's on some bullshit. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> give Derek the honorary scroll. Ah, uh, <laughs> give him the scroll for never yeah. getting the scroll. Yeah. <laughs> Derek's wife talks to him before the show. <laughs> you better not get a scroll, Derek. You better not get a scroll. <laughs> Yo, that was funny. That was funny. That was real funny. Yo, everybody got one in the chamber, man. That's just some funny Hell shit, yeah. man. That was, mm. uh, okay, so, Jamie, we going to... Oh, first... Oh, yeah, watch the choppy. I haven't watched this, man. I'm not, I have no. I have zero interest, but I know the critics are getting on... Um, we all the Davis were playing um Miss Ob- uh, President Obama's wife. Um anybody watch the show? I have not watched Yo, I checked, I checked whoa, out just whoa, to see, whoa, just whoa, to whoa, see. Whoa, 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 whoa. Do not call that woman Obama's wife. Michelle she's, Obama. She's Michelle Obama. Madam, Madam, Madam President. There you go. There you go. Let's right? get that black woman. Scroll, scroll for that. Let's no, scroll for you. No, 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 not for you, for D. Scroll. No, don't give it to him. Don't give it to him. No, I'm, no, I'm trying to get I'm, I'm, I'm trying to you know, I'm trying to. I don't know. You're gonna wear you're gonna wear your arm out, Calvin. No, I'm trying to because they, they when they hit me first, they hurt a brother. Peter's a girl we can use that. I'll think about that too. Yeah, I'll think about that. This is oh, a fire safety yeah. device. <laughs> oh my god! Dennis, get warm. We all gotta hang out. Dennis, get warm. So we gotta come up there, man. But um, oh, uh, what else? What else we got? Let's uh, watch the chopper, Jamie. Ozark, oh, classic, right talking. there. Now we talking, Jamie. That's what the people want to know. Classic. I saw the ending, man. Very well written show. Sad to see it go, but they left it as a cliffhanger. I don't want people. I'm not gonna spoil it, but he might be able to come back. Maybe, 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 maybe the maybe the young birds might take over. Yeah. Oh. Nah, that's what goes, I thought you would. That's goes, what I, listen, I ain't finished watching it, so you can't spoil it for me, Jim. No, 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 I don't want to spoil it. I don't want to spoil it. You know, I thought it. I thought it ended well. There was a scene in it that actually, you know, one of my favorite characters. Actually, the person actually grew to be one of my favorite characters, and I was a little upset yes. about what happened to her. No, I'm not going to tell what happened for those who didn't watch yeah, it. But gonna, I'll watch be it. honest with you: if you haven't seen the the final series of Ozark, you're not really a true Ozark fan. I watched that shit as soon as it came on. That's right. Like you know, that. yeah. So you, you, you should tired. you should know you about it. Yeah. You going to sleep, all kinds of stuff. You got yeah, yeah, time, right. You, you got well, you well rested, bro. Yeah. Wait, one thing yeah, we gotta yeah, do yeah. though. I got this whole subject. But for Lisa G and for Roddy, we got a shout out to Yankees right now because it's that fire right now. Just gotta yeah, say yeah, it. Yeah, 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 the yeah, Yankees yeah, is right. flame throwing right now. Yes, 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 yes. They won today. Yes. Oh, all right. Yes. yes. Jam, you got I'm, another one? I'm sure Lisa yeah. happy too. Yeah. The slow hustle. Ronnie, I didn't read this one. I didn't, I didn't see, see this. Ronnie, you gotta explain this to the people. I think you saw okay. it about it. Um, so the slow hustle is about a police officer that was in Baltimore that basically was shot. Uh, I don't want to give too much of it away. It's actually not a movie. It's a documentary. Um, and it tells about an officer that gets killed. And they go through this long investigation figuring out how he got killed because they never caught anybody for the shooting. So they came up with different things because basically there was a lot of corruption going on in the Baltimore Police Department. And he was somehow connected to some of that corruption, not saying that he was corrupt. But he was supposed to testify about that corruption the the next day, next day of um, he got killed the day before he was supposed to testify in court. So people feel like he was murdered. Um, His family feels like they don't have enough answers. And um, it's interesting to watch. Interesting to watch. Definitely should watch it. You said a lot of the cast members from The Wire are in this, right? No, that's the no, next no, one no, we're getting no, right next, next one, before we go, Jamie, can you bring up Lisa's comment, please? 
Shout out Lisa, sister Lisa. <laughs> yeah, she said some people are gonna die, Rodney. That's right. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that, guys. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kelvin. You can hear more at uh, the Empire One Six One Show podcast. All yes, right. Lisa's a right, big, Lisa. big, Let's do Lisa's it. A big yeah. Yankee fan. Go down to oh, yeah. the Yankee yeah, camp yeah, before, yeah. before COVID came. She used to go down to the Yankee camp every spring and play out with the women out there and play ball. And Lisa still plays ball every day. So shout out to Lisa who always checks in on us. That's what's watching up. the show, man. Thanks yeah. for the support. We're gonna That's support what's up. Her. And Lisa, let us know what, what day to, when we can find the show. What days is it on the way out? We got one more on the chopping block. Jamie. Nope, Jamie did. Yeah. Yeah. Now. Yeah, now we're talking about right here. Now, this is Ooh. pretty. This is coming out good. It's a little slow, but it's, it's good. It's not good. If you're looking for the wire action, it's not that. It's more a lot of dialogue. It's a build up. I can see it's going to be a build up of the show. There's a mm. lot of the cash for the wire. Do Ronnie, I don't know if you saw last week, this week's episode. So Doogie was the cop. Remember Doogie's yeah. little boy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all lost it, man. When I saw him, I saw him, I lost it, man. I was like, oh, man. I I almost felt a tear come down my face. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, the thing is, um, for those that were Wire fans, the... We Own the City is basically a lot of the same characters from the Wire, but they basically now made a lot of them cops. But this series is about the documentary that I was just talking about, The Slow Hustle. So if you're going to watch the documentary first and then go into the series on HBO, you have a complete understanding of what's going on. And actually, Marlo, right there in that picture, actually plays the officer that was killed. Oh, That's what he yeah. get. So, <laughs> so yeah, watch The Slow Hustle first and then watch the HBO series. That's, that's interesting. That's interesting. And uh, she said, my favorite show is the Jesse Williams show. Now, see, we're going somewhere now. Jesse Williams. You know? What is that? Uh, oh, the, the, the Uncle Tom? Nah, Jesse oh. Williams, uh, the guy, the <laughs> Grey's Anatomy guy who's, you know, butt naked on, on Broadway these days. The one that got the reduced child support? Yeah, him. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. I, I'm impressed that he got his child support reduced because I, I never, don't, you don't hear too much about that. No, because yeah, remember the he money was, he was making. No, was the money he was making at Grey's Anatomy, and then now he's making Broadway money. Yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he's on the pole right now, bro. Basically. Okay, you know what I mean. Yeah. Let's talk. Let's talk about oh, that. Jamie said he leaked his nudes. What? Yeah, somebody leaked his nudes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't want to. I didn't so, want to. So, I don't want to talk about. I want to talk about this. Jamie, do not bring that picture up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't bring the picture up. Yeah, I'm heterosexual. I'm heterosexual. Remember, I said I'm trans slender, not transgender. <laughs> 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 oh man! Nah, but the thing is, um, mm-hmm. regular people when they downgrade their jobs, they don't get their child support reduced. That's facts. Nah, that is a fact. They sure don't. They sure don't. So. Least you know, he is. usually the judges say you shouldn't have left Grey's Anatomy. You should have figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> I you know, think you spin off or something. Oh, bring up Lisa's thing real quick so we can say what it is. Jamie, bring it one more time. Then we'll go back to the last comment. Oh, she's, she's, honest, yeah, she's, she's Sundays at 7 p.m. on Twitter. All right, Lisa, I'm checking you out. Place. Check out All right, Sundays Lisa. at 7 p.m. You know, right, right, right. And she's out the, here. What was the last comment, Jamie, before we wrap? And uh, it was a comment. You said it was a comment about from Dina. I thought it. I, I didn't get to see it. I don't know. She said, "Bring it up, Jamie." I don't know what he's t- she's talking about right there. <laughs> Jamie, hello. Let me go. Yeah. Oh, the one about Kelvin. That's just hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, can you bring it up? The one she said about Kelvin, real quick. We got two minutes. Oh, she said, she said Kelvin, like- Kelvin looks like he's sitting in the break room. <laughs> Way to go back to <laughs> and on a fun note, Jamie does. On the Kelvin took, when Kelvin break, he break. Break. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks for everybody for tuning in tonight, man. It was a great night tonight. Rocking out with a shout out to Tom Swazi and his group. Man, let's see. Uh, vote for Tom if you like what he said tonight. June 28th is the parent primary. We want to say love, peace, and peace for everybody checking us out. Let's chop it a like and subscribe. Peace, peace, and peace. Yeah, that thing is. Oh, 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 oh,